doing it. Very good. <laughs> we're gonna... I assume we're not... We're just, uh... We're not looking at the drafts or anything crazy like that, right? I don't have them, even if I wanted to, and I don't. Because we're already doing five games, and that's too many. So. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. So I just figured if there's anything to say about the draft, you can say it during the first couple minutes when nothing's happening. Yeah. No, I mean... It's pretty normal. <laughs> so... How have you been? Been doing uh, all right? Yeah, doing all right. Um, yeah. I can't. I'm not gonna do it. All right. I was gonna tag you as fantasy dunce in the. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be funny. I. I don't actually get upset, but <laughs> it is a whipping every time. I always forget we have it until somebody mentions something, and then you know you have to you have to add it at least once. Uh, yeah, I, I was like, oh, I have two pings in the Rodham server. I wonder what for. <laughs> nope. Yeah, I also One... didn't know who the prophet was at the time, and we just added them, so I had to go look it up and see who we were calling in. But it's cards apparently, <laughs> so I yeah. guess I guess cards won something at yeah. some point. So good for Interesting. Him. Had to look up who the prophet was. I'll remember who the fancy dunce was. Well, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> We're, uh, we'll replace you here soon. Or... Yeah. I need to look at the actual standings. But well, the I know understanding I'm doing I was well. given was that I, I won't lose my fancy dunce tag if I'm not like in the league when someone else loses. Oh, I. <laughs> didn't know that lane had that rule that's i i think that that rule may not really exist and was just an elaborate ploy to get me to sign up for fancy but it didn't work Ooh, right now for whatever uh, reason right now looks decide... like uh oath on the bump for the fantasy dunce if he uh doesn't turn it around here <laughs> well he joins me so at least when when someone else is when I'm getting harassed, you know, I have someone else. Yeah, he's right uh, there with me. He's one and five, and then uh, Lane and Miggy are both at two and four. So, Ooh. <laughs> close race for the fancy dunce award. Well, yeah, because there's like a a poo poo bracket, and <laughs> oh, the, the yeah, loser yeah. of the of the losers is who actually gets it. So <laughs> they're they're in line to qualify for it. Bracket. Well, it, it does. It has like a poop emoji. I don't know what else you would call uh, yeah. it. Like... Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, because it's on Sleeper now. I just remember yeah. it was on a. Drop buff had the. What was it? It's just like the trash bracket. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the it's difference. Just though. the trash if, can. If you had yeah. picks and bands, you wouldn't have lost, right? So. Yeah. That's the... Of course. <laughs> so I, was paying a lot, I was paying a lot of attention. I definitely wasn't a little lazy, and Lane offered me a trade that, in hindsight, was pretty decent, I think. And I was like, you know what? I like where I'm at right now. <laughs> and I went like 0 6. But that's okay. Alright, how long have we been live for? Five minutes? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, well, let's, uh, let's get this on the road then. Um, welcome to the. Rodham review for week six of Frontier Academy. This is our two junior games. We're going to start with Crow Storm, and then immediately after go into the Darkwind games. Uh, I'm Maris, and my co-caster today is 2004 Lexus GX470. I I don't actually know your last name. D Davis 2004 Lexus GX470, whatever your last name is, something like that. Go the full introduction. Maybe I killed him. I'm not really sure. Are you here? 
Oh god. I lost Lexus right as we were gonna do a thing. I swear I haven't just been talking to myself this whole time. Well, um, maybe we hold on a couple minutes. Uh, let's see if he comes back. And if he doesn't, uh, we'll just go. Whoops. Hello? 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 Okay. <laughs> he's, yeah. he's actually here. I don't here. know. I, I could hear you the whole time, but my... I, I don't know what that was. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> perfect. Well, uh... My, my last name, uh... Thomas, by the way, I think with that full information you could probably dox me, but okay, well, my car, my name, but it's not my car anymore. So yeah, need your your mother's maiden name, also the street where you grew up. Um, what other security questions? I don't know. Yeah, anyway, yeah, no, no, no. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, it's Crowstorm versus Dud Brew. Dud Bro, is it Dud Bro Gaming or Dud Boy Gaming? I don't remember. I think it's Dud Bro. Dud Bro. Gaming. Dud Bro Gaming. Yeah. They have like a pink logo. They're they're pink. That's kind of cool. Um, all right. Well, let's uh let's see what we got, uh, shall we? We'll we'll start it yeah. in three, two, one, go. All right. On the bottom side of the rift, wearing the blue health bars for game number one, are Dudbro Gaming. Uh, you've got Keikovu in the top lane playing Set Chihuahua Dog in the jungle on. Hecarim, DBG Naysayer in the mid lane on Vex, and Q Lulu and Hard Only for Bart in the bottom lane on Kaisa <laughs> and Alistar. Bye. And then the red side of the rift, of course. V Bon in the top lane on the Shin. Is that is that Data? Data? I feels like it should be Data, but maybe I'm wrong. On the Nocturne. X Craze Hokage on the Vigar, Benji Peach on the Jinx, and Garethar Nautilus. Yeah, and oy, oy, oy. some five stacks coming out, and they're not gonna not gonna see each other. It looks like so. Oh, yeah. actually, Radom's gonna walk over the ward, so that's at least somewhat known. And now they'll have to go scurry back into their jungle and see if they can get some vision. But um, yeah, these are <laughs> like relatively standard team comps. I. Like there's some there's some fringe picks here I, I guess would we'd say but uh you got Nocturne Shen on one side you've got you know hyperscaling and Jinx and, and Vigar for Crowstorm and you got this kind of just normal team fighting standard comp for for Dudbro yeah yeah I I think it makes a lot of sense with Dudbro's car I mean everyone just kind of flies in there <laughs> Kaisa follows up on the Vex and the Hecarim and all that and and Rodham Scott. The Nocturne Shen, Vigar, Jinx, I don't know, it seems like a pretty standard front to back. You have your engage and you have your back line. I, the Nocturne's interesting. I haven't seen that champion in a while. But, I I don't know, is it, you probably watch this team maybe more than me. Is this a staple, or is this a... Uh, so Data's this up, uh, well... I guess he's he's taking over on the main roster for Blazing Cake, and this is actually his first week. So uh, oh. I have very little information on Data other than I've cast him like once or twice before. But um, uh, yeah, I, we'll I don't call him a Nocturne OTP then. For sure. Um, <laughs> it's also apparently Nocturne's birthday today. Uh, oh. So happy birthday, Nocturne! Uh, this game, of course, was on Sunday, so not quite his birthday. Maybe we'll get a present a couple days early. Have that, a meaty trade up top. Yeah, that's a rough trade. That seems pretty normal for that lane. Um, I don't feel like Shen does super well into the set in general. Yeah, I it's kind of a even lane. I think uh, it's set sided, but I feel like Shen can kind of hold his own. He can hang out, be Shen, you know. Yeah, he's got the Shockblade skin though. I haven't actually seen that one in game yet. Of course. I mean, I would expect Bimon to have the latest Shen drip, you know? <laughs> I'm... Oh, I don't know. My my favorite character in this game is uh, the Vigar, the Vigar, the Vagar. I enjoy that character, and I really like that he's getting picked so much. <laughs> and uh, it feels like all levels of play he's really taken off. I More don't like playing against that it, character, but... but... 
you know, I like everyone playing has... against him. Oh, that's uh, fair. I like seeing him. I like yeah. playing with him, you know. Hook gonna land on Mr. Hart, but he's gonna go in for the double knock up the dash forward, though, from... Well, it wasn't a dash forward. He got knocked back by uh, was Benji. He's burning down to the Ignite. Chihuahua Dog trying to get on him for first blood. He just needs a Q and an auto, and he does have it, but Data here to try to turn it around. Hits the Dusk Trail. He'll find one and start autoing down the Chihuahua Dog. Oh, nice little knockback from... There's not like an easy way to abbreviate hard only for Bard, right? He, he's just hard, yeah, I, I guess. I like the full name. <laughs> <laughs> that's like four Bird syllables, hard. though. That's, that's rough. Yeah, you should go with hard. I mean, it's a nice trade. A lot of summoners went down, so we'll see how it plays out over the next few minutes, right? Uh, a lot of opportunity now in the bot lane. Still cleanse on the side of uh, Hugh Lu. And flash on Garethar, so there's a lot of playmaking still to be done. Yeah, and it's nice for Data to pick up that kill, but before six, uh, I feel like once he uh, once he gets that level six, gets the paranoia going, should you know slap pretty hard when it, when he goes in there. Yeah, anything you get with Nocturne free six is always a win. I feel like uh, this is look mid. This is the Jinx gank of Legend as he walks into the mid lane. Naysayer going to get hit by the Zap. x is just trying to chase him down. And th they should have the damage eventually. He's got a flash at some point. And now going to get to the Scuttle Crab, but it doesn't matter. The flash Q from x finds the kill, and ROTM takes a small kill lead early on. Yeah, I mean, roaming ADC. I... <laughs> it's an enlightened move from Benji Peach. I don't think they'll miss too much. I mean, three or four minions for a kill for your mid laner seems like a good trade off to me. Yeah, do have to keep an eye on it for him as he's behind you know, almost 20 CS. He'll he'll even it up a little bit here, but uh, you don't want that to get too far out of hand. I think. Um, yeah, I, I think a lot of that's from the the state of the wave after that. That gank earlier where it kind of got crashed and Qlu gets to catch some of it. Well, Benji just takes his room timer, I guess. Yeah, level 6 for Vibon. Uh, not the big combat summoner, but going to go in and take a big trade off of Kovu. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's always funny because... I, I don't know. V, every every time I watch or, or play with Vibon... Oh. oh yeah, the flash Q going for the autos, the shield just enough from Kovu. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, the hook and the gameplay experience for Kulu as Data flies in with the paranoia. Get some autos through, and Benji will pick up a kill as well. There you go. <laughs> no flashes. Octarine level 6. And they die. <laughs> pretty pretty simple equation, I think. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, before he interrupted me with his flash taunt, was I feel like I... Vibon's almost always playing weak side top, and he's also always just swinging on dudes up there. <laughs> Makes a he has his own fun, you know, <laughs> with his Shen picks and his Orn and such. Yeah, a lot of people talk about the the Chad top laner. It's really Vibon. Like you get the <laughs> yeah. Orn, you get the Shen, you go slap some dudes for a while. Like what a what yeah. a monster. Yeah, asks for very little, gives quite a bit. And still gets up there and uh, beats some ass, I think. So, yeah, I really want to watch. X Craze has the Predator on the Vigar, which is super annoying to deal with, uh, especially for low mobility champions like the Vex. E even the Kaisa can get stuck inside the baby cage if you just get Predatored on at the wrong time. Um, so I want to see him use that, maybe get out of mid lane, because I think that that's something that. X Craze has struggled with a little bit during the season is he's pretty good at the lane matchup. He'll do pretty well in it, but just has trouble translating that into some other lanes. So maybe just a little, yeah, little ability to get him out of there. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, that, nothing wrong with lane kingdom if it's a, if that's your style. But the Predator Vigor is pretty good at roaming. I think that it's going to be a little hard to make a roam down into this this Kaisa with cleanse. Feels like she has that almost exclusively to play into. I, you know, I really don't know what else she's cleansing on this team, like Taunt or Nautilus knockups really aren't cleansed. So it's kind of Vigar Cage is probably going to be cleansed a lot. But even just for making plays in your own lane, it's a nice rune. See some pings going out in the jungle. They might look to 
Get a little move in on some camps here with their pushing bot lane. Yeah, Paranoia's back up for data as well, so it has the opportunity to fly on in there. We haven't seen too much from Chihuahua Dog outside of that early gank on bottom side. Do you want to see him get more involved, or does he need yeah. to farm to an item here early? Uh, I mean, I think you're Chihuahua Dog. You have your ult. You're ready to start making plays. I mean, they they should know uh, x Crisis flash timer. Um, there's not really a lot Vigar can do about Hecarim, right? Just just coming in and ulting on top of him. You know, you can throw Cage out and maybe save yourself, but if it's played well, I think that should just be a free kill. You gotta look for the Rift Herald, just not a bad move. Data just... Brand oh no. Oh, they're going for oh. the dive, gonna get the hook in onto the Alistar to start it off, but Data just flying in, ignoring the support, going right for the AD carry. They'll get two kills, they lose Garethar to the tower in the process, but a positive trade overall for ROTM. They do lose the Rift Herald, and now Chihuahua Dog looking for Vibon in the top lane, gonna kick him in and somehow gets taunted in the middle of his kick. That was an interesting little interaction, and Vibon still hanging in there, about 100 health, but the Haymaker from K Kovu finishes him off, and now Chihuahua Dog and Kovu get some plates and potentially drop that Rift Herald for first tower. Yep, that's gonna feel, gonna feel a little bit bad, but I mean, that's the like I said, you you play a little aggressive sometimes at the top lane when you're all alone, and that's how you get punished. Yeah, next craze just gonna predator his way on up there. He does take down the Rift Herald, but that tower. Uh, not the healthiest thing in the entire world. And Vibon will have to teleport back to mid lane just to make sure that Naysayer doesn't get too many plates out of the equation. So, nice little counter punch from, from DBG. They find a kill in the top lane, get four turret plates for themselves as well. So it sets up this dynamic where the top half of the map is pretty strong for Dudbro, and the bottom half is pretty strong to uh, for uh, ROTM. And... I I think for OTM, you know, you, you take those. Uh, like I said, Hecarim's pretty good into this uh, into this Jinx Vigar backline, but um, I don't think Set is. I, I think if uh, we see some good some good cages from X Craze, it's gonna be really hard for Set to be any kind of carry in a team fight, right? And meanwhile, you know, you've got your Nocturne who's fully online. It's gonna be really disruptive in these fights. Your Jinx is strong, your Vigar's sitting pretty, just scaling, so... Uh, I'm pretty satisfied with those early games going. I mean, they're up 2k gold, so I, I guess they should be, but... Looking... Drake coming up soon. Data looking down on the bottom side. Be a counter, but they do have the Shen in their pocket if they really want. Yeah, going to hook in on Q Lulu, and now both junglers going to show themselves immediately. Data flying in, almost just one shots Q Lulu, but not quite able to take him down just yet. Chihuahua Dog gets exhausted, trying to get through the teleport, or the Shenult comes in onto Data, the teleport to answer. Vibon just diving Ooh. under tower, the zap lands. It's three kills and four for Return of the Middle Sticks, and they lose nothing in the process. <laughs> I think Naysayer may have teleported right in front of X-Craze. <laughs> because that guy arrived to the fight about 300 HP and x Crazy's ultimate's on cooldown. I'm... Blues are all there. <laughs> I'm putting it together. Yeah, uh, sometimes <laughs> you just take a big star fragment to the face before you go down to the bottom lane. Yeah. It happens. Uh, split push in the top lane, though, for Keikovu. He does get the first tower. Um, I mean, that thing had 10 health anyway. And... Yeah. Uh, dragon in the tower in the bottom lane for Return of the Middle Sticks. So, um, you know, really good fight for ROTM down there. Uh, do you have an opinion about Chihuahuas? Uh, you know, I I have no personal experience with Chihuahuas, but what I always see people saying is that they are the worst, and based on the you know, based on the very limited knowledge I have. I'm fine with just going with that. I mean, they people usually refer to them as just like little demon dogs that are just weirdly aggressive and annoying for no reason. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not one of those people that thinks they're cute because they're small and weird. You know, oh, they're my. they're really weird. The cutest chihuahua is the one in the Taco Bell commercials. That might even be before your time, though. I might date myself. I don't know. I'm not that. You're not that. Okay. I, cool. I mean. 
we we have the Yokiro Taco Bell Chihuahua on deck. Yeah. Okay. It, it's not a classic memory of mine, but I'm aware of it. You know. Okay. Uh, I'll take that. I I always worry about that. Well, any, anyway, we're gonna have the junglers flying into bottom lane. X Cray's gonna die for his jungler's sins as he just goes in and assassinates the Vex. Meanwhile, Vibon and Keikovu are gonna just scrap up in the top lane, which is apparently more interesting than whatever's happening down there in the river. Um, yeah. <laughs> it it always is, man. It's all, <laughs> it's always Vibon's lane. It always pulls you away from whatever's happening and just shows you this. I mean, this is peak League of Legends gameplay, so you really yeah. can't argue with being pulled away. The Holebreaker finished up first for Cave Kovu. Might be a little bit difficult for Vibon to deal with, but he's still winning trades despite not actually having items. So I don't exactly understand how that works, but, you know, here yeah. we go. Uh, I... Data snuck in, but gets spotted out by the uh... Void Seeker. <laughs> Vibon's got a taunt to get over the wall. He gets betrayed by data and the ult from set will keep him on that side of the wall so that's a i guess technically a pick for dud bro uh it's a shutdown that goes <laughs> the way of yeah. uh chihuahua dog that <laughs> that was a little silly <laughs> i don't know what else to say about that other than it seemed preventable <laughs> it seemed like vivon was probably calling that he could taunt to the plant and Data decided there was no more time. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you just got to get out of there right then, you know? And... Yeah, I mean, you know, if you're Data, you, you're worth 850 gold. You're telling your shit oh. to kick rocks. All right. Oh, my. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Man. <laughs> uh, it's sad. <laughs> <laughs> they say he's having a little bit of a tough time. Yeah, game, uh, Chihuahua Dog's looking in, but he's going to find Data already waiting for him in the bush. Has to use the ult to get out, but Data's got the counter ult. And some nice headbutt so far from uh, from Hard. He's he's doing about as much as you can do on the Alistair in this situation. Yeah, I mean, I suspect he might be hard for more than just Bard. His Alistair performance so far. Or See, not. I, yeah. I thought it was more like a reference to his like rocky exterior that he's got in this oh, game. Oh, yeah? But like... Yeah? Yeah. I... I don't even know what skin you know. that is. Is that like the the frost skin line? I, I'm not really sure. I, yeah, it does look kind of like... Is there a black frost all-star? Is that a thing? I, it looks like it might be a thing. Uh, anyway, there's a 2v2 happening. Q-Lulu trying to fight his way out, but he's just going to find Benji Peach on the other side, and x Craze will finish off hard as well. Two more kills for ROTM. Benji's, or Data, excuse me, is unstoppable at 5-0 and on the Nocturne. Yeah. Uh, it feels like there's a lot of desperation, which, I don't know, maybe maybe is, is valid, but it uh, feels like uh, Dudbro... Maybe overforcing a little bit here. Because they, they took that fight with a lot of gusto, it seemed, onto Data. Really, really d thirsting for that shutdown gold. And then turned tail pretty quick, but it wasn't soon enough. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's, I mean, it's going pretty well for Rodham. They, something pretty catastrophic, it seems, would have to happen for this game to not go in their favor, I think. Yeah, as a... Well... Chihuahua Dog here, going to get the kick onto V-Bond. Do they actually have the damage to finish him off? Nice flash just to get him to the other side of the fear, but with Naysayer there, going to be able to shut him down. And or I guess it's not a shutdown. He's he's a one in three, the weak side top lane experience <laughs> right now. Uh, but, but 300 gold in the like pocket of Naysayer. Down, you know? And they're going to get a tower potentially with the uh, extra objective bounty on top of it. Meanwhile, uh, Sheila wrecking through mid lane. Drop down yeah. a second turret in mid, and Benji and Garethar should be able to get number three. Oh, Garethar, that's a max range hook, and he'll just walk it on out. Sheila? Not quite going to be able to charge into the inhibitor, but still, three structures in mid lane going down uh, in exchange for the one. Still a positive gold trade for ROTM, and now they'll pick up their third dragon of the game as well and put themselves on Mountain Soul Point. And, and that's all true. But I think Dudbro Gaming really taught Vibon a lesson up there, and sometimes that's more valuable than three structures and a Drake. You know. Yeah. Um, what, what lesson do you think that is? Uh, not to 
not to fuck with Dead Bro Gaming, okay. I think. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Right. I mean, the rest of our team might not have learned that lesson yet, but the Vibon has, so. So, I think, uh, as a, uh, a manufacturer of of miracle come from behind team fight wins yourself. <laughs> uh, how, what are, what are Dudbro needing to, to look for in this situation? What, uh, what's the key that you've got to do to try to get back in it? I mean, <laughs> they realistically, they need to look for some, some horrendous errors inside of our DM. Uh, and this is not one of those. Yeah, Data gonna go ahead and pop the paranoia. The zap gives him vision to fly in and finish off the kill. That's pretty nasty little combo. And now Keikovu looking for anything that he can. He'll get a nice stun. He'll pull Garethar into the turret, but that's a gigantic shield, courtesy of the Shen. Uh, meanwhile, Vex on the flank gets onto Benji. The hook not quite gonna land, but Nice Air just taking a huge chunk of damage. It's a couple of crits there from Benji Peach, a couple of autos from Data, and they'll have to say goodbye for now. Meanwhile, X Craze. Hanging out in the bottom lane, just getting some farm, getting some towers. All in a day's work down there. I mean, that was close, honestly. It, it was close to what they were looking for, but X-Rays didn't even TP, so I don't know. I, I, I Realistically, what I think Dead Bro would want to look for is, uh, you know, they want to group up. You're going to have to sack some farm in your lanes or in your camps or something. You're going to have to group up and control your vision and, and look for picks, look for little overextensions, you know? and catch one or two people out where you can and see if you can maybe uh, bait RTM to kind of overplaying their hand a little bit. But so far it's all been smooth sailing. I, uh, the way they've been playing, I, I feel like it's pretty simple. You know, you, you set up around this Baron, you get your soul, you win the game. Yeah. Uh, Data even finishing up his Axiom arc on his last back. That's a, uh an item you don't get to see too often it's a choice i i think it's like the I'm one not... character that it's allowed to be built on maybe you can argue I'm kiana not and that's convinced. i maybe maybe it's just my my hot take but i i don't think that item is even really that great on nocturne i don't know maybe maybe it is but it feels like Let's we'll see how many seconds. Uh, I mean, he's he's refunded twelve seconds so far. That's pretty big. Yeah, and that's twelve seconds of his life that he'll never. Like the, now, he's he's free to do whatever he wants with. He I doesn't mean, have to just, regen his ultimate. The argument against it, like what you want to think of as, you, we've refunded twelve seconds. So let's see how many seconds he sits with his ultimate available. You know. Yeah. Um. In no, I. Using it. It's a. Uh, I agree. It, it's a good ARAM item. In some situations, <laughs> but that's yeah. that's about as much as I'll say about it. It's it's fun. I like that item. But uh, Chihuahua Dog not not liking a whole lot there as he gets killed by X Craze. Zap gonna land. I don't think that they're gonna look. Never mind. They're gonna pop the paranoia. Ooh. The knock up not quite able to be uh, spell shielded there by Data. Hard gonna flash away. He's got the unbreakable unbreakable will. That might be a. It is unbreakable. Will. I think Brahm's shield is just unbreakable without the will. Mm, that would be... Cause it... I, I have very little knowledge of Brahm's <laughs> ability names. <laughs> I'm going to trust you. You could tell me it is literally anything, and I would believe you. I, no, I, mean... I don't buy that. I, I think I could make up some pretty bad day. I have in the past. You know, sometimes you just <laughs> call, them, call them whatever you want. and um, They're looking... You know, Dudbro's still looking for the fight around this uh, dragon. It hasn't been started up just yet for ROTM. Onslaught of Shadows going into the backline. Chihuahua Dog trying to get onto Benji Peach. They fly in with Q Lulu, but they just can't quite find the assassination. And Kaisa falls again. The Hecarim not quite able to finish off the kills either, and it's a double kill for Benji. Meanwhile, Vibon just making sure that Keikovu can't get away to a safe distance in order to teleport in there. And ROTM, again, doesn't lose anyone, and they'll take the Mountain Soul. And now the mid lane 1v1. 23 minutes it's not a 1v1 at all benji's here and they'll even hand over the kill to him just to make sure he's godlike seven and one now on the uh jinx and vibon might have found kekuvu lacking this is still a little happening 
Yeah, he keeps getting the pull through. I really It's the small Shen mechanic. The the one the one big mechanic he's got where you pull the sword through, you get the slow. And yeah. it's really remarkable how he just always seems to find that slow. Like that one just waiting an extra second in order to pull through. I, I yeah. see it. You know. That's kind of the power of the Frostfire Gauntlet, you know? Slow them so you can always kind of be a little bit quicker, get the walk around. Uh, it. I, you saw in that last, in that dragon fight, you know, you saw how Dead Bros team comp is supposed to play, right? Saw how, how it should be able to play with the Hecarim going in, the Kaisa coming over the back, but they're still too far behind, and due to that actions of V-Bond, there's a distinct lack of a set teleport to follow up on that engage, so. Uh, yeah. 10k gold lead, Mountain Soul, Baron picked up. It, it's a wrap, I think. Hopefully. I'm praying. <laughs> uh, this one gets exciting. There's a problem. <laughs> yeah. So this, um... At this point, they should be able to, to play you know, even play pretty badly and still win. <laughs> but being honest. Yeah, this so. looks like GG walking down the map is, well, you know, maybe you got to go take the Krugs first, but um, should be GG walking to, down the map at some point. You have to get your death cap so you can do funny big numbers. He know? doesn't need, he needs 200 gold for it. I, I actually, I, that's what he's doing. Does he have... <laughs> Oh no, he doesn't have futures market. Yeah, he's he's got two, he's got two of the big old rods, and he's got nine hundred gold, and he's twenty shy. He'll have to go back and get what that, I guess. The heck? Yeah, winning the game is for Bozo's death cap is where it's at. Yeah, plus he increases his farm number, gets some of those jungle camps. That's. That's the big brain. It's all about the roll rating score. There's really nothing else to this. I thing. would argue this is probably hurting his roll rating score because he spent two minutes only farming Krugs, <laughs> pretty much. You know, well, your CS now per he minute can, is going down. Now he can now better farm minute. champions with the death cap. His damage per minute is going down. His CS per minute is going down. You know, what? I'm expecting big things here. Is he thought about taking the Raptor camp? Uh, he will take the Raptor camp. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> All right, they they've set up the wave. Oh, the flash hook from Gareth are not quite gonna land, but in comes what should be GG on a platter for ROTM. Hard only for Bard, <laughs> just gonna eat a primordial burst, and sometimes that happens to you. Um, yeah. He's uh, he's dead. That's... The funny big number. It's here. Unfortunately, doesn't have his ult now for the next person that he catches in the cage. So, we will have to stall out another you know, minute or so here. Set flanking or saving his KDA? Oh. I get it. He's hunting alone. He's positioned really far away. Yeah, he's he's got to get the extra resistances. Anyway, fight's going to break out. Benji is just free firing on the back line. Now gets stunned up, but it just... Yeah, there's not quite enough damage coming through to even take down the Jinx, and no one else even under any particular threat during that fight. Naysayer has to flash out, and the Nexus will flash out of existence for game number one. Crowstorm with a 25 to... well... 25 to 7? <laughs> V-Bond disconnects? They've got to finish the Nexus off. Okay, there it is. 25 to 7 uh, score at the end of the game. The extra death for x craze Maybe could have uh, been avoided there, but... Um, I told you, roll rating impacted. <laughs> <laughs> the goofy last couple minutes. A good game overall, you know. A good performance from our team. Yeah, so <laughs> they'll uh, they'll take a 1-0 lead and be able to uh, close out the series. Uh, both of the series today uh, very needed for the Rodham teams as they uh, they lose and they're eliminated and they win and they have a chance to advance to playoffs. They're still. I think there's still a world where both teams win out and they don't make it, which is very sad. Um, oh, yeah. But you know, at this point, you, you, you're just open. Well, yeah, you, you can get. only control what you can control. So yeah. you go out there and win. If you don't make it at that point, eh, we won our games. Like, we did what we could. So. Yeah, you just blame those guys. <laughs> you blame the other teams for not doing what you wanted. Yeah, your PayPal didn't hit in time, I guess. Yeah, you have to live with not that. enough. <laughs> oh, 
Oh. Very good. Alright, I'm ready to roll just right into game two, whenever you are. Yep, uh, 4 3 1. Yep. That's what we're going with. I'll load That's it what up. I've been told. And it's the other Crowstorm game, so I think we did it. Yeah. Looks right to me. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. This character's selected. <laughs> Says, why are you flaming me? Uh, I don't know, but no reason. <laughs> <laughs> we both know you can take it. You know, it, it's gonna make you stronger <laughs> in the long run. Uh, we'll go with that. Yeah, yeah. I oh, know Yuna's apparently happy to hear you. So you got a big fan in the chat. <laughs> oh, fog. Yuna TV. Nice. switch sides. I cut the music and then I wasn't ready. My bad. Okay, there we go. Uh, we're back for your game number two. Uh, let's go. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Alright, you want to introduce the blue team? I guess I can. Once again, in the top lane, we got Vibon on the shin. It, uh, playing the jungle Zachary, X Grace Okage on the Blanc in the mid lane, Benji and Girthar playing the Samira Rel down in bot lane. And on the red side, wearing the red health bars, trying to stay alive in the series, are Dudbro Gaming, K Kovu playing Mordekaiser in the top lane. Uh, there's probably going to be some drama here in a second, so we'll hold off as. Yeah, it's uh, it's now known. This is the outflanking maneuver. Oh. Big triple knockup. They'll get the <laughs> snare down onto Naysayer. It's first blood as Benji just diving in with the Samira. Keikovu might even that one up as he does take down Garethar, but Kululu gonna fall as well. It's two for one for Return of the Middle Sticks on the level one play. <laughs> well, that was goofy. <laughs> uh, a lot of oh. flashes. X craze. Why? Is he gonna get it? Ooh. He doesn't. He still has flash. not dead, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There you go. Uh, Chihuahua dogs on a Mumu, uh, naysayer on Corky, Kululu, and hard f only for Bard on the Kaisa and Nautilus. Wait, what? There. So it's a one kill lead, but they're up six hundred gold. Is it an assist gap or what? Um. Yeah, I mean, everybody and got first blood cap and, and assist the first cap. blood. Yeah. Hey. Wow. That's funny. It smells like someone is just grilling inside my house right now. It kind of <laughs> smells really good, but also worrying. Is anyone grilling inside your house? I, I don't think directly inside my house, but... Do you suspect someone may be grilling right outside your house? Uh... Yeah, actually, there's just somebody camped out on our deck grilling right now. It's kind of weird. I don't. <laughs> no, I, I think one of our neighbors owns like a fire pit, like next oh, door yeah. to us, and it just like it smells very strong. My wife is correcting me. It's like four blocks down. It's just a very <laughs> strong smell, apparently. Maybe you just have a, a superpower of I... smell. I do not. My my wife makes fun of me all the time for not being able to smell things. So, um, very good. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, if if there was a superpower I didn't have, it's probably that one. Um, we, we we can go down the list if you really want, but you know, that's a that's uh, definitely not included. Um, I was comfortable leaving it where it was. <laughs> well, uh, Benji gets to start with two extra long swords, so that seems pretty good on the Samira. How does he get two extra long swords out of a kill and an assist? The the I does don't know. Does he have futures market? <laughs> like No, there's no way, right? No one does that. 
Samira, yeah, no. He's got the normal, now normal green runes secondary. I mean, he gets first blood, and it's he gets... 400, and then an assist is like 50. That's, that's not 700. Means. It doesn't I, make any sense. Yeah, Ooh. I'm not really sure. Um, they're going to get the knockout Benji pretty low, but Gareth are doing a good job playing linebacker so far. They dodged the second bandage toss. The Void Seeker coming in. Gareth are just is doing the real thing where he can't really leave because uh, the champion can't. So a little unfortunate yeah. there and a good pick for Dudbro as they even it up in kills. Yeah, and I think the, the result of that level one play right is that Everything the junglers touch in the next five minutes after that uh, should turn to gold because no one has any flashes. No one really has anything. Um, Chihuahua Dog makes the first move. It's a nice play. Nice gank. How do you feel? Uh, gets the full clear though. K Kovu just shoving in top lane and going and taking the crab. That feels like yeah a pretty big waste of time, but maybe it isn't. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I guess they haven't seen Zach, so maybe he feels like this is the, the safer move, or maybe he's just checking to see if Crab is up, and then I, Mordekaiser does it pretty fast, so. I guess so. Knocks the shield off and bonks it down with his nice little passive jungle buffs. But he's done CS in this top lane matchup, which is a little weird to me, but... I guess that's why I picked Bibon Shen. He's probably played this matchup a lot more than Geikovu has, so. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going with the sentence, so I'm going to just cut it off there. Um, I bet. Um, that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> You have a first strike on Corky this time. I don't know how I feel about that one into the assassin team. Yeah, Maybe you can I get mean... some usage out of it. But um, also, Pretty one thing I do remember about Data, he does love playing Zack. So this is a spicy pocket pick, essentially, for for Data. Yeah. So feels like a lot of comfort across the board right now for ROTM. Yeah, I mean. Pretty much. <laughs> that that sounds accurate to me. I've been looking at Bibon Shen, X Praise LeBlanc, it is Zach. I I would assume that Benji's a Samira enjoyer, because most ADCs are. Yeah, uh Bibon gets taken to Cyber Brazil. This isn't going particularly well for him. He's got a couple of autos left, has to flash, counter flash from Keikovu, but he just doesn't have anything left in the tank, I guess, to go for it. Holding on to flash for a long I, I didn't see if it just came up or what, but really uh, really wanted to see if we could get out with that one. Expert is looking up top. I don't know if he's going to find anything here. Oh, yeah, Kekuku is still in the bush. He's got the shield. Does he have enough to actually stay alive through all of this? One more auto. One more auto. There we go. Oh. It's yeah. a nice dodge on the Mordekaiser abilities. I don't know if it changed the situation, but it looked pretty cool, so... Uh, it, it at That's least good. meant that Chihuahua Dog couldn't get involved at all on the room up, so it's a it's a solid yeah. follow kill for X Craze. And yeah, do you have any particular insight into this Amumu Zack matchup? Uh, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> honestly, no, man. I <laughs> I I don't. <laughs> I it, it's I, it it's pretty rare that you see these two characters picked in in competitive. It feels like, and even rare that you see them face off against each other um so i'm just gonna soak it in i guess <laughs> they i they're pretty similar as far as what they do and how they play i mean zach has some different gank angles but i think uh, i think they're both filling the same role in this team comp right yeah um kind of interesting naysayer is gonna go back and just buy a hex drinker straight up so really worried about the LeBlanc matchup in particular. Yeah, it's good value against uh, against this top side in general, you know. I'm going to stay safe and scale. It's not a bad choice. Yeah, uh, they're going to use the Curse of the Sad Mummy on Vibon up here. He's just almost 1v2-ing. Uh, got Chihuahua Dog, like, very low. Much lower than I thought that would go, but eventually they'll get the kill and 
um, send Vbon back to the gray screen for the first time this game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Chihuahua Dog thought it was going to be easy, huh? <laughs> and maybe it was, I guess, but did solo a move ult the Shen, so, you know, you, while it is strictly a, I guess they get, they get Drake, right? So it's not strictly a, a losing play, but, you know, there, there's some, some mental advantage for, uh, for Vibon there. Yeah, I yeah, do think it's interesting. They, they more or less knew that the dragon was being taken. Anyway, uh. Benji going to get caught maybe a little bit by hard. Data just going to slap him into the blue buff. Garethar looking for it. Has the Magnet Storm to pull back. Not quite able to find the stun, though. On to Chihuahua Dog and everybody going to evacuate. Um, DBG know that RTM are on Dragon, or at the very least should be on Dragon in that situation. And so you get the gank in the top lane, and then they just didn't go kill the Rift Herald? Feels like a little misstep. Uh... I think the excuse junglers would like to use here is that it's bad for tempo. They'd like to use the tempo word to describe why they didn't do Rift Herald. Um, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to wind it back and check out the state of the camps. What it looks like is Chihuahua Dog, based on how his camps respawned, he just cleared up top and ganked. Maybe he just felt like he was too low. Or they, they couldn't be 100% sure our team was on drag, so it seems risky to to just start up Rift with your little 300 HP, no health, a Moo Moo. But, you know. Yeah. It's it's still available. Uh, I'm trying to think of, of what the play is for these teams, and it kind of feels like... It feels like you're just looking for for a mistake. I mean, if I actually like Dud Bros, uh, I like what they've got going on here as far as team comp, because it's pretty hard for Benji to play. I think into this Amumu Mordekaiser Nautilus, but you know those three champions will all shut him down if he goes in. And uh... where was I going with that? They they can all shut him down in a team five, and then RTM doesn't really have that much uh, sustained damage. You know they've got X rays, the block, which is fog, and I guess Zach does some damage. But... Yeah, so. I, I guess you feel like ROTM really needs to get ahead here in this yeah. early mid game in order to make this team comp work. Yeah, I like that they've already gotten the first dragon because it's if you you know, they might reach a point in the mid game where they find, oh, it's actually really hard for us to fight these things until Benji's on three or four items or extra grades hits hits big spikes because they really need to carry the damage in these fights. Oh, Yvonne yeah. getting looked on. Yeah, they're gonna take Vibon into Cyber Brazil again. He's not having a great time in the favelas there, but Data gonna fly in, try to slap Keikovu into this minions, but with Naysayer hanging around, they don't want to overcommit. But for now, it keeps Vibon alive, and he'll continue farming his way underneath the turret. Um, Rel is hanging around the area, but no Run real award. damage threat is on the way for ROTM. But it might be enough that DBG are gonna back off and think better of this dive. Yeah, he's getting his little first strike gold. I swear that rune is probably the most annoying thing to get hit by in this game. It's just pinging you with the little. Ching, ching, ching. I, I don't know. I can't make. I can't make the noise. <laughs> I'm sorry for <laughs> trying, but it is really terrible. Hard only hard. Yeah. Uh, are Tim gonna just swing into this dragon side, take away this crab, and? Set up for a potential second dragon here in a minute and ten. And DBG... Um, I don't know, the package should be up right around that time, if I'm timing it correctly, which I'm probably not, but... Um, could be a uh, consideration. Yeah. Oh, he's just going to stopwatch there. Uh, he's trying to fight it out. They get Benji... Pretty low, but the shield coming through from the Shen tries to use the Inferno Trigger, but just gets interrupted immediately, and it doesn't matter. Wow. Data and V-Bond just swarming on people. They find the three kills, uh. and no real way for Naysayer or Keikovu to join means that that's uh, almost a pure 4v3, almost 5v3, as x Craze was roaming on down. It's a really nice Shen ult. kind of saves it, because it looked like Benji was about to just get crushed. 
by the CC chain of this this Amumu Nautilus, but Shen ult comes through, can't get him in time. They even canceled his ult, but just too much of a mana advantage. I don't, I don't know. I think if you're dead, bro, you're right now isn't exactly when you're wanting to fight. I think you're looking for for more of like a mid game when when the the Samira and the the LeBlanc aren't quite strong enough to just provide their their entire team's worth of damage, you know. Yeah. But right you know now, right now, you you still have to respect the Zac and you still have to respect the Shen. They still do enough to pretty much solo kill uh, an ADC, right? So. Yeah, well, on that, not really back timer, but on the death timer, they're going to respawn and just walk back to the dragon with the package and are able to secure it, which is actually a pretty big win for, for DBG, knocking ROTM off of the the quick dragon soul stack. Yeah. I mean, it always feels good <laughs> getting Drake. It, it feels like... Oh, this is going to be... This is Close, the I'm sure. more intense one v one v bond. Pretty low. Oh, the Q, the ISO Q is just stacking up, and it's the solo kill for Keikovu. He's got the finished Rift Maker, and now you can see why the Mordekaiser is considered a pretty big counter into the Shen. Yep. I, I, there's simply not a lot to do when he yields you. I would really like to see v bond build QSS. It doesn't really fix the matchup, but it fixes the dying at will part, you know? Yeah. Where at least you can get out and just leave. You still can't really have great pressure against him, but... Yeah, I mean, it's either yeah. that or you have to second item, like, a, a force of nature or something like that, right? Yeah. Yeah, we'll see what he goes with. But... We'll see what he wants to do, but for now, Data and Benji are threatening enough to make sure that Hard and Q Lulu cannot stay at their turret, and that'll be the first tower of the game going down for Return of the Middle Sticks, and it'll extend their gold lead out to about 2,000. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty nice look. I mean, they know, they know the Rift Trail's going down up there, I assume, so... Bring their jungler in, knock down towers, not really a lot that you can do about this this big meaty Zack standing in your lane, so... Yeah. I... It's 2k gold lead at the end of the day. Well, I shouldn't say at the end of the day. At 15 minutes. <laughs> For OTM. Not feeling too bad. I think something to keep an eye on is this Corky, who's been able to just kind of sit and stay relatively even with, with x craze I think that his death is from that level 1, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that sounds right. So, since then, he's just been hanging out. Yeah, I also like the awareness from Qlulu going for the uh, Kraken Slayer build this game when he's the only AD threat. Uh, last game was going for, like, a Shattered Queen thing that Kaisas do now, for some reason. But, that's a, that's a correct build. I like that. Um, Vibon and Keiko are gonna renew pleasantries in the top lane, while RTM kind of swinging through, trying to get some pressure on mid. They're gonna get the chain down onto hard. Oh, he actually goes for it! Miggy <laughs> just gonna find the kill, gets exhausted on his way out. The Amumu ult used just in defense. It does uh, return one. Garethar has to commit the Magnet Storm plus the Inferno Trigger, trying to chew through just not quite enough damage. Garethar's Ignite takes the kill. It won't be able to finish off Q-Lulu in the process, but or q -Lu? I, I think I've called him Q-Lulu a lot. Uh... Yeah, I think it's just Q-Lu. Yeah, um, Data oh, wow. gonna make them kith, and Benji <laughs> trying to find the kills, just not quite enough damage from the Samira. Make them kith. Oh my. <laughs> that was a little goofy of you. Yeah, that was a really nice AQ, actually. But yeah, not much comes of it. Kovu gonna walk down and make sure that that's the end of the pressure from Benji and Data. Yes. We'll reset back to some lanes, it looks like. M Miggy gonna head... Miggy. Uh, x is gonna head down to the bottom lane. <laughs> or he'll match up <laughs> against his uh, old friend, Naysayer, down there. Yeah. Yeah, they're reliving the good times, I guess. Does v get out of this? I don't think he can. Yeah, he, he realizes his recall timer isn't quite long enough, and now the whole squad is here for <laughs> DBG. That's a nice Ooh. flash, though. He got some distance. Oh, uh, the max range hook, though, from hard. Means that uh, he's going to 
go down. Bought a lot of time, though, and x Craze finds the chain over the wall. Does he actually have enough damage to chew through Noisayer? He's got Garethar with him. Knockup just gonna land over the wall, and now gets the second rotation of spells to finish him off. 25 gold gonna go to Kulu on the end of that one, but Sheila in the top lane for DBG means that they can at least turn this into a relatively even play. It's the one for one, yeah. the tower for tower, and they should get the second charge as well. The the march of the meaty men up here. <laughs> What's going on? Mordekaiser, Nautilus, and Mumu, and Rift Herald running it down. They're... I, I kind of wish they, they went for that tier two. Would like to see them pick up 600 gold for the boys, but, you know. Dragon's going to go over to our team, though. That yeah, the... Pretty the good. Dr dragon right off his spawn. It's the Cloud Soul, unfortunately. So not the, not the fun dragon in this game. Um, I guess it's pretty fun though on the Samira, particularly. You can like hit your R and then just zip around. Seems kind of neat. Uh, X Craze has a little flank, and Kulu might not get to play the game here in just a second. Yeah, that's a gray screen waiting to happen. Data finishes off the dragon. It, it, he's in the Mordekaiser role right now. This is the sex dungeon happening in live time. And now Naysayer has the package available. Does he really want to commit for it? Like to see the package, the aggressive package plays. Uh, yeah. Dog just no fear on in here. The solo ult onto Benji oh, Peach, wow. but it's a huge ultimate from the Rel. They turn it around immediately. The Inferno trigger just burning through a double kill for the Samira. X Craze finishes off another one. What a play by Garethar. Yep. I ever since Rel's release, I feel like we've probably gotten to watch Rotom Plat Rel montage moments. I don't know. Oh, Naysayer goes down. Yep, they're able to track down the Corky, and that might just be the Baron for RTM. They don't have the most health bars right now. Uh, maybe it isn't. Yeah. They'll think about it. I, I mean, I saw the line there that Chihuahua Dog is going for. You, you have the Corky package, and you think, oh, you know, we've, we've got this Samira. She's got to shut down. She's pretty big. If I uh, move ult her and Corky flies in, we can be in one shot her, basically. And then uh, the huge Rally Gauge just stalls with the rest of the team. Not really a lot to do. But it feels like the game just got kind of blown open. All of a sudden, they're up 5k gold. It was pretty close. It, it, in my mind, this is, this was normally where they should start to perform pretty well. The broke game and Steam, but oh, yeah, Vibon probably gonna have to try to scrap it out here with Chihuahua Dog. Just kite him around. That's stacking up to be a bit of damage, and that'll be the turnaround from the Amumu. Um, really big back, though, for ROTM is they finish up the Spectre's Cowl on the Zac, they finish up the Void Staff, they finish up the uh, Lord Doms as well, so uh, well and fully online for the ROTM They get spot. the Hearthbound Axe Power Spike for Vivon. You know? Yeah. We talked about what his answer was going to be in his build path with Mordekaiser. It's Wit's End. Is that what that build... Oh my god. Yeah, that's what, what we're going. What a monster. All right. <laughs> uh, doesn't sound the worst. Doesn't. I mean, that sounds great if you're fighting exclusively Mordekaiser and Amumu, which he has been. So, you know. You there those. are. I don't know. It's so much magic damage. I, I feel like a force of nature would, or something would just be stronger. But uh, he's the Shin guy and I'm not. So I, I really won't judge him here. You know. I mean, yeah. I'm clearly judging him a little bit, but other than that, does x Craze win this straight up? I don't, I don't think he wins it 100%. Although he's he's acting like he does, and that'll chase Keiko out of the jungle. He's playing his range, using the chains. I think if he W's in, he's in danger. But yeah, I think sometimes the confidence as well. You know, he he know he thinks he's got enough damage, so he might, and I gotta respect that. Uh, they get the flash out of hard, which. You know, less engaged tools available for for Dudbro, and they've essentially just shoved Dudbro out of their own jungle and made sure that they can set up for a very easy Baron. And Ooh. he does have the damage, right. as it turns out. So okay, X Craze yep. with the solo kill in the bottom lane. <laughs> yeah, uh, I thought Kate Gubu by surprise. I think it's disrespectful, but the could. Start Baron, but I think they're just going to be satisfied with the tier 2 tower in the bot lane. Ooh. Oh, Garethar not quite able to get over the wall, just a little too fat there. 
pants now, just walking around. But apparently that word kill was enough to tip the objective bounties on, so there they are. They're active here in 30 seconds. About the straw that broke the camel's back, jeez. Yeah. I think I it'd mean, be interesting if there were just like hard set points that it turned on and off at. So you'd like kill that ward and be like, oh, that was too much. But then you'd watch Quirky steal the Krugs from v -Bon. It's like, ah, no, never mind. They're back Ooh. off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if they were just extremely sensitive to, to whatever the objective bounty breakpoint was. It'd be a little goofy. I'm sure no one would complain about the system then. Yeah. I mean, oh, my Whoa. God. <laughs> Uh, Kulu thought he was safe because Chihuahua Dog was in the chain. As it turns out, he wasn't safe at all. That was um, a pretty remarkable amount of damage out of the LeBlanc. And he's got his eighth kill of the game. Yep. And I think they're going to start Baron here. They look like they want to. There's no Chihuahua Dog ult either. That was expended. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, they're, they're snowballing pretty well with the lead they have. It's going to be a trade. Dragon for Baron, but that feels pretty terrible, right? What's your second dragon? I don't know. You're getting it. You're getting another Mountain Drake. It doesn't feel that bad, I guess, for your Amumu, Nautilus, or Kaiser, but Baron's obviously the uh, it's superior a, objective. It's a Cloud Dragon, I'm sorry to say. Oh, wait. What? I thought this was a... Oh, wait. I'm silly. It's a... And, yeah, that's terrible, then. <laughs> yeah, they do get the 600 gold objective bound. Well... Ooh, ooh. The uh, invisibility plus the flash just enough to get Kulu out that time. Um, I don't know how x Craze keeps finding these little angles just to assassinate the Kaisa. Kaisa's been Here getting they the... are again. <laughs> the big three are shoving it down once more in the side lane. Hey, that's the, the objective bounty. This is for the whole team now, um, not being <laughs> selfish. That's a 300 gold bounty being split amongst the squad. Um, it's still you know, keeps them at a 7,000 gold deficit, which isn't great, but uh, Garethar and Data, their own meat Wait. squad, going to go ahead and beat down on the mid turret. Uh, x Craze and, and V-Bon are up here on the top side as Benji rejoins the mid lane. This is the classic 3-2 uh, split push strat. Yeah. I mean, it's vintage, I think, League of Legends and current season. You send all your tanks to split push a side lane. All the damage characters look at each other funny in the other lane. All right, Garethar bought the chains. Who are the chains actually for, though? Is that Corky or Kaisa? Probably Corky. I would expect it to be Corky. Maybe Kaisa. She's the one doing. Or is it for Mord to keep your ADC LDR. safe? I. They are on the Mord. All right. Interesting. Well, I guess in case you get singled out, right? Yeah, a lot of damage there. Good chunk from x Craze over the wall onto hard as the Baron minions continue to push in for Return of the Middle Sticks. Uh, trying to keep them all buffed up here. None of the inhibitor towers have fallen just yet. This has been a little bit more measured here for the last couple of minutes with the Baron. But now they'll break open the base. And we'll see if we get our big climactic fight here or if the game's going to continue, if DBG can can hold on and stay alive in the series. Trace doesn't have a lot of mana. I mean, there's an angle here. Whoa. Yeah, big engage from Garethar, though. He's going to pull in three, and the AoE damage from x Craze finds two. They'll dive uh. in. Triple kill for x Craze. Benji just going to eliminate the Kai'Sa underneath the turret. And K. Kovu tries to find safety in Cyber Brazil. He's just going to find a stopwatched x Craze though, and... Does get the return kill, but I don't think that's going to be enough to save their nexus this game as Vivon taunts through for the Bud Light Ace, and ROTM going to take the 2-0 win and stay alive in the playoff race. Shows what I know. I said there may be an angle. x is low mana. Uh, ROTM engages, and x gets a triple kill. So, you know. He was Bud holding Light. enough mana for the one <laughs> rotation. That was all he needed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> They just insta killed Chihuahua Dog, didn't even get his ult off. Yes. That's a good game. I mean, RTM, I think, came out and pretty much just <laughs> looked like the better team in most phases of the game. I like the team comps they ran with, I like the way they played them. So, good to see them pick up a dub and stay alive in the playoffs. Hope they can sneak their way in there. 
yeah, so we'll take just a short break and be back with the Darkwind series from Sunday um, in just a minute. Um, if Yabby didn't troll me at 658 for the first game. 5-8. He should be on Sivir. Right. Loading it. He's on Sivir, so we did it. Oh, these are some names. Okay. Sounds right. What are, uh, what color should they be? Let's look. Team Ambition Virtue. I really uh, should. They're like the... off orange on the statue. That's kind of weird. Ugh. I mean, that's what they want. I don't know that I can find that color exactly. I'll just get this orange. It's close enough. Mm. All right. Uh, I you mean, uh, yeah. So I'm. I'm ready. I'm. I'm excited. I'm hoping for uh, an exciting 3-0 right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Darkwind series. Uh, again, our team needs the win to stay alive in the playoff picture. With a loss, they'd be eliminated. And uh, I guess let's just get started in 3, 2, 1, go. On the blue side of the rift, wearing the blue health bars for game number one, are Team Ambition Valor. Peels in the top lane playing Shen Spoozy in the jungle on Udyr. Uh, Hadio? Hadio? What are you feeling? I think it's Hadio. Yeah, Hadio. Okay. Hadio uh, on Ari in the mid lane. And Dallas and Snow Life in the bottom lane playing Zeri and Janna. And on the red side of the rift, the Cardinals 28. Aatrox to Nulls 29, the top lane, playing Aatrox. Fake Axe on the Sichuani. Woo, what's going on here? Anything? Just looking. Lost in rotation in the mid lane, playing Diana. And is is it Yabyinda or Yabyinda? Uh, Do you know? Yabyinda. I, right. I just go Yabby usually. But... All right, we'll, we'll go Yabby and Banana. I'm the Banana. Bot lane, the Sivir Sivir. Where is Snow Ooh. Life going exactly? What this is heck? quite a word. And quite a journey now that the John is going to have to go on. I don't even know what skin this is. Um, Battle Queen? Oh, okay. Oh, the flash from Yabby? All right, it's first blood for the <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay. Uh, Snow Life, check your PayPal. The, the money should be in your account now. I, I just don't know why you wouldn't walk to the like corner and just flash over like why why'd you go for the turret why i i don't know there's a lot of there's like three individual decisions during that that were just kind yeah. of baffling but now they have to i live feel with like the, with where he was he's probably almost <laughs> dead regardless but it was very goofy <laughs> it's very goofy to watch it i i don't know if there's a a living move but if there was one, that definitely was not it, you know. Yeah. Um, definitely uh, definitely wasn't. And now 
Uh, Yabby gonna have to, well, Yabby gonna get the 400 gold lead to start off the laning phase in what should already be a pretty good matchup for Yabby and Banana. I think the Sivir Seraphine can exist and farm, which is what they want to do against the, the Zeri Janna. As an yeah. expert bronze support player, that's my analysis. Um, I mean, it seems like they should have the ability to shove this lane in, and Zeri is... One of the things she's not notorious for is her wave clear, so in theory they should be able to get a lot of a lot of pressure down here. Both junglers pathing away from the lane, so be interesting early. Ooh, nice trade. Yeah, lost. Make sure to dash in for the extra little trade. I won't be able to use that joke for too much longer. And bronze one ninety LP. Get that <laughs> one game win. Oof. Miming. <laughs> oh my. Uh. Jungle matchup, Udyr Sejuani. Udyr Sejuani. It's riveting once again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two um, two champions. I think you're you're a big fan of, right? Yeah, uh, I I am an Udyr enjoyer. I'm, and you know, if the game weren't Sejuani, I would whip it out. But... Uh, Dallas. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Okay. I... <laughs> You know, uh, uh, Pickaxe is behind him bomb. now. He's got the flank. The unintentional flank here is Banana going to get the slowdown. They've got the exhaust. Do they actually have the damage? They're going to force the flash and the follow through with the Winter's Wrath for the kill. <laughs> Means Yabby's <laughs> out to 2 and 0 on the Sivir. Uh, all right. <laughs> Meanwhile, Udyr about to get double crabbed by Sejuani, which sounds right based on my knowledge of the jungle. Um, he is harassing Cardinals, so that's good. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I I don't know. I don't know if there's really a lot to say about what what's gone on in the bottom lane so yeah. far in this game. It's been goofy uh, from <laughs> from both members. Head empty, no thoughts. Um, Banana's pretty low though. Gets chunked by a little damage from Dallas. They're just ignoring this minion wave that has built up underneath the tower. And instead want to trade it out. And Dallas is just going to straight die. That's a killing spree now for oh. Yabby. Um, that's Dallas of PvE Esports fame for anyone keeping yeah. track. Um, there um, might be one person in the chat that like uh, really appreciates that I said that. Uh, maybe. <laughs> but who knows? Uh, Spoozy is here for the gank. He's got the bear stance he's running in. He's going to flash and bear the... Seraphine. They've got the shield, the flash board though from uh, Snow Life means that Yabby can continue just auto attacking. The minion damage starting to ta stack up, but Yabby gets taken down. It's a shutdown for Spoozy, but it's countered by the kill from Pickaxe. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I After what they've witnessed, I think Yabby's just got baited by the, uh, the Janna sitting under tower at 200 HP. Probably assumed it was just another freebie for them. And this time, actually, it was a bait. Of all the, the baby-looking plays so far, that was a bait. All right, so you're you're Yabinda. You've got like fifteen hundred gold. Is is pickaxe, coal, longsword, longsword the play? I think it feels good. Okay. I mean, you. I I don't know. You could probably head back and picked up a blasting wand. Instead of a pickaxe here, and, and you're still ahead of uh, Dallas. So, it's... I, I think I think this buy feels good. I mean, I mean okay. Cole feels natural for what Sivir does in a game. Apparently, Sivir in this game is going crazy and killing everybody, but, uh, you know. Yeah, normally, farming it up. you want to farm it yeah. up and hit, like, three items underneath your own tower. But this game, we're going to just go battle Sivir, I guess. Yeah. I, I mean, he's, he's got room for it. I, Cole's... When you're already winning lane, I mean, Cole feels really good, right? I yeah. Mean, you're, you're not like... He, they're so far ahead that it's not like he's putting himself at some, like, temporary inventory disadvantage to buy it. You know, he's still ahead with the Cole in his inventory, so... Yeah, I just didn't know if you felt like Noon Quiver might be better than the Pickaxe Longsword Longsword, or you just value the AD, or if there's, like, a, an uh, actual thought that's happening there. Maybe there isn't. Maybe it's just these are the items that you want. Yeah. I, I feel like it's it's probably 
the values in this purchase is just on the raw map AD you, you have over Dallas right now. Noon Quiver, nice for your wave, right? But yeah, I mean they are just laying into them with these boomerang blades. So. Oh, even getting the snare and the cleanse underneath the tower from Dallas and the boomerang. The oh, the flash for the second oh. part of the boomerang. The cheeky little flash from Yab Yinda gonna find the kill. Now Hadio uses two of his dashes to get over the wall. Gonna find the charm on the pickaxe. They've got the ignite ticking him down. Cardinals in the world ender just trying to fight his way out. Gets one knock up onto Swoozy, but. I don't think he can quite turn 1v3. They'll find the pick on to pick axe, and Hadio gets his extra dash. He'll dash over the wall and make sure that Cards eats at least a little extra bit of damage underneath his tower. They've really put a focus on Cards up in this top lane. Yeah, I mean... And for their focus, they have gotten Shen up. I mean, after Cards catch this wave, he's going to be up about one or two farm and has an assist, so... Nice work, Cardinals. Good job. Holding it down. Really being a rock. Because, I mean, honestly, if I'm if I'm cards at this point, I don't have think I really have to do anything in this game other than just not feed. <laughs> you know, looking at what's happening in the bottom half of the map. I, I'm not surprised that we're not really seeing aggressive moves anywhere else, because bot lane is just so far ahead that you can just let them win the game for you, you know? Yeah, and Lost with the teleport on the Diana has opened up a pretty big CS lead as well in the mid lane, up 20 CS on the Ari. So with even with the kill that he was able to pick up, it's relatively even in gold between the two. little chunk there from Hadio, just making sure that he knows he's alive. Um, yeah, I don't hey, know. Hey, guys, tonight. <laughs> yeah. There's not a whole lot really happening in this game despite people just roaming around the map non-stop it's just the champions that were picked i guess but yeah i i mean atrox shen udyr's edge this top side is a banger oh the auto cancel it's straight a little sad sadder than it could have been yeah yeah be level seven to the level five from dallas that's uh let's take a look actually that's a 2400 gold lead casually for uh, for yabby so pretty much the entire thing right there on his yeah. shoulders um and now they they do have the udir hanging around spoozy maybe looking for a play has the uh ninja tabby so he's got a little bit of speed not the most though and yabby and banana gonna roam and grab the scuttle crab while pickaxe solos the rift herald on the other side of the map yeah it's a little spooky but little spoozy uh i don't know i guess i guess they didn't <laughs> expect sedge to be on rift Herald. i so they play that really cautiously maybe it's just how strong the banana and yabby are right now i guess yeah yabby the, the combined cost away from I, i'm assuming it's a gale force uh i think that's what those items are don't yeah, quote me gale on force 80 carry Kraken. itemization uh pickaxe, pickaxe gonna throw the ult and force the flash out of peels which you know, now you can't come in with the Shen ult and taunt flash, so uh, good trade yeah. regardless. It's a big wave uh, going down. Plates going to Cardinals. No TP on the Shen, so it's going to be a nice advantage for this top lane. I mean, Cardinals, how much gold does he have? He should be coming up on Holebreaker pretty soon. Yeah. Maybe on this. Let's see. Probably cost him 1925, I think. Oh, yeah. wow. Uh, Shelly gets into the turret. It's just going to fall, but Pickaxe forced to flash away. Cards gets taken down by the extra damage from Hadio, and Pickaxe trying to scrap his way out, but he really doesn't have anywhere to go. Head back to the tower, but Spoozy picks him up with the dot damage from the tiger stance, and now Yabby and Banana know that there's people up on the top side, so they're feeling nice and aggressive down on the bottom side. Yep. Yep, yep. Uh, somehow Cardinals was tanking there. I wasn't really playing... Yeah, Nothing much to not happen, but... They ran out of minions before Shelly was there. Before Shelly actually, like, yeah. materializes. Uh, ooh, Lost almost able to finish that one off with the, the Moonfall. Needs one more auto. Ooh, the shield from the turtle stance is enough to keep him alive. Can Lost get out? He can, it looks like, as it turns out. He survives the, the gank in mid lane, almost turns it back onto the Udyr. And Yabby and Banana... Oh my gosh, just going to force the monsoon out of snow life in order to stay alive underneath the turret. 
I couldn't tell because I wasn't clicked in on his character, but I feel like he may have. There's like a weird bug with Diana's passive auto where sometimes it just like won't happen, <laughs> and I feel like he may have got it there. So I, I thought that was going to be killing the Udyr for sure. Maybe he just canceled it. So it started. It made the little sound effect, but four plates going down the bot lane. I mean, yeah, it's uh, kind of interesting. <laughs> Our team hasn't looked at the dragon yet. Um, they wanted yeah. the Rift Herald first. Now maybe it looks like Pickaxe is headed down there. Going to take the crab and the dragon potentially. Uh, Spoozy though is going to get spotted by Banana and the stun, run stun job done. He's out of there. Yep, the job is done. We did it. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, it looks like they're. There's a there's a pretty good chance that RTM gets all 15 tower plates in this game. Yeah. Uh, did you play Hearthstone for a while? Is that a? Uh, I have. Do you have the the jobs done, like noise just <laughs> oh, yeah. in your head? Okay. Yeah, I I get that. Okay. I actually don't remember what card it is, but I, I remember the noise. It's it's every time that you're out of mana and can't play a card, it makes the. Oh. Noise. Really? Yeah. I haven't played Hearthstone in a couple years, but. I haven't played since That's the very brain. first expansion. Yeah. I no lifed it briefly and hit like rank four, and then I never played again. So, I, yeah. as you do, um, we're legends of Runeterra <laughs> fans now. <laughs> it's also the peon from Warcraft Three. Yeah, if if you're old enough to know that game, not that I would. <laughs> um, they're gonna walk into Hadio. That's a lot of damage coming down onto Yabby, but he's still staying alive. About a half health and lost. Goes in for the dash. Banana picks up the kill, and um, the hunter turns into the hunted as Hadio gets picked in the mid lane. And now yep. lost, looking for Dallas. Not quite able to track him down overneath the wall, uh. over the wall as he's got the the zap out and. Even the cleanse immediately. That was actually pretty nice from Dallas. The immediate cleanse flash out of the Sejuani ult. Yep. Uh, Lost tried to get the dash over the wall, but it seems like he didn't wait. Ooh, Yabby. Yeah, Yabby. Uh, they're scrapping in a 2v2, but with Spoozy here, that makes it a little bit more difficult. The Monsoon actually might have helped him out. The Snow Life is very low. Not quite able to find that last tick of damage that they need to take down the Janna. I was really worried. Usually when it zooms in on people and there's nothing around, that means that like some cross map ability is about to hit them. I had no idea what it was going to be, so I was very excited to see what happened, but uh, Spectator just trolling me very slightly. Uh, Spoozy walking in. They're going to get the Shen ult just to make sure that Pickaxe and Cards can't continue being aggressive there, and now Yabby and Banana are back in the battle bush and walking back toward the dragon, and I think that's two for zero overall for ROTM? They even... I don't think anyone died. Uh, Hadio Jana died and... initially. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. And then... No, and Spoozy and, and... and Snow Life got out. Yeah, never mind. Yeah. Yep. No, it was, it was a really nice route from Banana, because I think, uh, yeah, he could have been in trouble there. But the Seraphine comes in over the wall, locks up the Udyr, and Yabby positions it really well and gets out. Have you uh, have you played Zeri? Uh, Zeri Enjoyer? <laughs> Not much. I can't say that I've been putting many reps on her. Do you in, do you have advice for people who might be breaking their their Q finger, uh, playing the Zeri, shooting the the cannon every once in a while? Probably have that on like a Skarner, right? So junglers would be the experts in that. Yeah. I, I'm a pretty expert Skarner player. <laughs> um, yeah, honestly, no, I don't. I, I I thought that I was starting to understand that champion, like what her play pattern is and all that, and that they've they've like mini changed her twice since her release. You know, with, with like reworks, they're like actually we want her to build this way and play this way. <laughs> so we're changing all the base stats. They've done that like twice, so I don't know. I think the character's pretty OP. That's what I'll say. 
Yeah, uh, Lost gets picked down in the bottom lane by three people, and that means that our TM will grab Rift Herald number two in exchange. Gonna lose some damage. Actually, maybe the entire bot lane turret here is Spoozy and Hadyo and Snow Life will take that one down, get a little objective bounty for themselves as well. But now, walking in, they're gonna find Peels. I thought that they'd interrupted the dash. I thought that the animation had started to play, but I guess Peels was just standing still, baiting me. But um, yeah. he'll get out to safety with the the shadow dash and yeah it's a 5,000 gold lead right now for return of the middle sticks and dragon gonna spawn here in 30 seconds that they can go grab yeah i mean really they've kind of just blown open this lane phase and i think they're just running into mid game i mean it's pretty weird it's six to five and they're up 5,000 gold it's how much of that is just in the i mean it's got to be oh so much of it is in the bot lane it's almost uh... <laughs> almost the whole lead <laughs> Yeah, the, the 14 turret plates definitely help, so... Yeah. That's, uh, I think, where ROTM picked up most of their their gold lead there. And Dragon gonna spawn in two and one second. They'll be there on spawn, and... TAV really doesn't have any way to contest that, so the cross-map play may be the option as three people kind of collapsing in toward cards. Snow Life with the Zephyr over the wall. They'll get the slow, get the slow, into the slow. And now Hadio over the wall. Cards burning down. The Ignite might be enough to turn that. He's got the kill onto Dallas, though. He'll Ooh. land onto Hadio, and they'll turn it around for the double kill wow. on cards. And Lost oh, now wow, is wow. tracked down. The Moonfall onto Snow Life. It's a triple kill for Cardinals 29. That's why they call him Aatrox Nulls 29. <laughs> I... You know, it looked like a good collapse, but they forgot one simple thing, right? And that's that he was hunting alone. I mean, until Lost showed up, but for, <laughs> for the bulk of the play, he was hunting alone. Ooh, Ooh my. big Seraphine ult. Yabby just getting the damage through. Dashes forward with the Gale Force for one. And Spoozy, uh, he's Udyr, so he might actually get out of this one. Nope, not quite. The autos from Yabby enough to finish him off. And the double kill, the full house cross map for cards in Yabby and Yabby. Yep, that is... I mean, if the game didn't seem to be in RTM's favor before, that one feels a little backbreaking. I think that not getting that pick onto Cardinals is really, really tragic. I think for TAV, yeah. Cardinals twenty nine with two A's. That's that's clever. I like that one. Um... <laughs> oh, Cardinals. I, I don't know. <laughs> it, it feels like, uh, except for when, when these plays are happening, it, it feels like there hasn't been that much to say other than there was some goofy gaming down in the bottom side of the map early on, and it's just snowballing from there. Uh, at this point, you know, each one see Rodham right, moving into the jungle, set up their vision, take all these camps away, and, and just close it out. Play a nice, clean game. Baron coming up. Baron's alive, I guess. Yeah, we're not... just cresting I... over 20 minutes now, so it exists some of yeah. them. Yeah, I'd like to see him group up and just just go do it. You know, I mean, you know, you'll win the fight. There's your soul isn't really your win con at this point when you're this far ahead. And you only have two drakes at 20. You just want to go close it out. Yeah, cards and pickaxe looking for the pick on the peels. They're gonna get the flash instead, and. The hex gates have opened, so Pickaxe can zip back in. Um, Lane and I were debating last night what flavor is the Hextech Drake. Flavor. Yeah. Mm. Well, I, I, as far as, like, flavor, like, what what kind of flavors are we talking here? I mean, like, ice cream flavor or something? Or, I, like, if it was an ice cream, what flavor would it be or what? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, sure. I don't know. I mean, maybe like a vanilla? Or not a vanilla, like a, a mint is what I meant to say. A mint. All right. But I'd go with. But maybe, I don't know, maybe that's Ocean Drake. I don't know. Because, you know, it's not just all about the, the color of the Drake icon. Yeah, I... Like, Infernal's like a spicy dragon, you know? You've got the, <laughs> like, the earthy earth tones of the mountain dragon. Um, yeah, you've got the you know more refreshing and crisp ocean dragon. 
just didn't know if you had like a, a flavor you'd really oh, yeah, associate yeah, with yeah, the yeah, headstand. Yeah. Okay, I I got you, I got you. I I, I went uh, I went too too deep into ice cream, and honestly, I just said my favorite flavor of ice cream because Hex Drake Drake is my favorite Drake, I think. But um, ooh, oh, Cardinals. Cards still looking for it, but just uh, gonna have to back out after the Shenold hits, which. Fair enough. Um, almost able to one v two down on the bottom lane. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dallas, I think, just trying to get anything in this game. <laughs> it's been a rough one, I think, for the Zeri character. Got the Swifty boots, which I'm not sure I'm sold on. Yeah, I don't know. You're not at... like mitigating a huge amount of slows, so it's just for the extra move speed. Which, I mean, that champ likes having move speed. But you're sacrificing some attack damage, or some attack yeah. damage, I guess. So, she faster you attack, the faster you stack your your move speed with your ult. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. The flavor <laughs> question. <laughs> well, what did you guys go with last night? I didn't uh, hear that so part of the cast. Lane said blue raspberry, and I just don't yeah. think that that's like accurate so I, I told him yeah. no, basically but do you have a I don't have a particular this, opinion or? other than that one's bad so maybe my opinion's not valid <laughs> either <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway pickaxe is uh, messing around with them in the jungle they're letting Yabby solo the dragon just to make him feel like he's uh, he's doing the big carrying right now getting the neutral objective and Dallas and cards are gonna share these cards together so that's nice of them just to make him feel that way because <laughs> he, <laughs> you know, yeah, eighty carry well, useless roll, right? Um, ooh, yeah, uh, Hadio not quite able to find the the charm over the wall. Banana able to finish him off. Smoozy gonna fall to Yabby. Uh, Yabby's assault. Dallas gets rooted up. It's a double kill, <laughs> actually. Uh, yeah, it's just the double kill for Yabby as Pickaxe finishes off the fourth one and. They have Baron, they have a minion wave, they have about 20 seconds before anybody other than Peels can answer. This feels like it should be the end of the game. Yep. It does feel that way, doesn't it? <laughs> um, it's a 15,000 gold lead at 24 minutes. I think that this should be the end. Yeah, Peels going to try to make his last stand, just taunting back into the tower, but didn't take anybody with him. RTM not hitting the Nexus, importantly, as everybody respawns. Look at the shutdown onto Pickaxe. This game might actually last a little bit longer, unless they can focus on the Nexus here. Although Loss says otherwise, a big Moonfall, the triple kill for the uh -huh. Diana, giving us a little bit of drama. Cards is going to scrap it out. They lose Banana, but um, they'll get the Ace and eventually the Nexus, as it's the Quadra kill for Lost in Rotation and the Nexus to follow. So... 1-0 for Dark Wind <laughs> over TAV. We'll see if they can close it out in game number two. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we had the best KDA. You know, yeah, we had a respectable KDA, but Lost needed to improve his roll rating right there with that play, so I respect that. Yeah. Seemed like a appropriate way for that game to end. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back with game number two. Ooh. All right, it should be 800. I'm going to load it. If he's playing a Nivea, that's the right one. Which I, is already giving away that this is just a thing that's going to happen. Oh, they roll swapped. Wait. Okay, never mind. It's not as crazy as I thought it was. <laughs> okay. Sick. I'm going to run to the bathroom really quick. I'll, I'll be right back. Very good.
Sorry about that. I'm back. Welcome back. Do I have a dreamy car, man? I do. Nice. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, see what nonsense we have for game number two. <laughs> I haven't fixed the scoreboard just yet. I don't think you need to fix it. <laughs> I I think that everyone's in order. But I'm. Oh I'm no! I curious. I had to update the. Uh, the one zero. For oh Rodham. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, the the, <laughs> the scoreboard that no one pays attention to. One of the many the services I offer. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Let's go. Three, two, one, go. All right. Go ahead and introduce our our blue team, I guess. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. On the blue side of the rift, wearing the blue health bars, as you like to say. Cardinals 29, rocking the Shen. Pickaxe on the Hecarim. Yabby Yimba, now in the mid lane on the Anivia. Lost in rotation, now in the bottom lane on Aphelios. And I'm the Banana, still on support, playing Renata Glask. And on the top side of the rift, wearing the red health bars for game number two, are Team Ambition Valor. Uh, UBC Souter is filling in in the top lane on Keenan. Snow Life has moved from support to jungle on Lee Sin. Dallas is into the mid lane on Pike. And Hadio and Spoozy are in the bottom lane playing Nico and Pantheon. And this is a little unfortunate for one of these teams, is about to be, as looks like cards is taken really low he'll be first blood and that'll go over to the pike they'll trade it out one for one thus far dallas trying to get the autos down pickaxe is really low they take down the pike but the hecarim falls as well so it's two for two snow life really low lost flashes forward one more auto from the crochet or the the sniper gun the the pew pew um is that calibrum calibrum yeah is that it know. yeah yeah it is uh, yeah, that's three for two <laughs> on the level one, so, um, kills on the carries for RTM, Lost picks up two, Yabby picks up one, uh, but Dallas and Snow Life picking it up, so the Pike gonna start out with the extra longsword in the mid lane. And immediately, level one, they're gonna jump on Banana. This feels like one of the weaknesses of Renata, and kind of amplified by the fact that Pantheon is a champion Ooh. in this game. Smoozy picks up the kill, Lost trying to get into the bush. He does trade that one back as Hadio <laughs> kiting out. He's got the Tangle Barbs for the snare, and he'll fight his way back out. We're playing some real man's League of Legends here today. What the heck? Well, I don't know. It looks like it's gonna be a lot more exciting than last game. I think. <laughs> First of all, a three and zero Philios feels pretty good, but it's this doesn't. I don't know. It feels like it, this could be the kind of game where Philios just gets one shot, you know, by the by the side of Tav. Yeah, there's there's five champions that do a lot of damage and can probably one shot an Philios if they get on him. That said, Philios is theoretically strongest when people are trying to dive on him and Hadyo experiencing that just a little bit gets chunked down a little bit by the the sniper shot Spoozy pretty low hits level two off of that minion he'll get the Q through on banana and uh, should be all for that trade at least but bot lane's showing no quarter down there yeah Ooh, whoa. somehow Dallas has managed to Manicure this minion wave pretty well. I guess he's against a Nivea who also can't wave clear early on, so maybe this is the the Pike matchup, right? Yeah, I I think it's it's weird that Pike is getting the prior like this, but Pike's one of those characters that I think has like a he has a what am I trying to say? People aren't used to playing against him, so you can kind of get away with stuff sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes you get prio just cause. Yeah, with he's... mid, it's no life. Yeah, he's got a nice pink chroma. That flash through was not the cleanest thing in the entire world. He's pretty low, but Yabby, out of juice in the tank, has to use the crystal eyes just to get a little bit of distance. He's gonna oh. be turned into Egbert, and <laughs> that means that he'll get chewed through. Snow Life will pick up the kill. Yeah, 
Uh, Pike mid, it does have a good gank setup. I mean, if you're going to pick Pike mid, this is how you want to play it. You know, you don't want to pick it to sit in lane and farm. You know, you want to make plays with your jungler. You want to look for roams. Um, so it's a good look for Dallas and Snow Life. I'm interested to see Snow Life. Honestly, my the only thing I really took note of last game from him was that level one. Oh my. Yeah, Lost gets chunked pretty hard, and now with Hadio down here, they're... this seems like a pretty uh, uninteractive lane for the opponent. Spoozy and, and Hadio on the Pantheon and Nico. Uh, seems yeah. a little rough to play against, and Renata not the strongest early champion anyway. Um, neither is Aphelios, for that matter. Now I mean... Snow Life threatening the dive has the ward over, so should see Banana on this minion wave. They're uh, they're really threatening this, and they just don't have yep. the minions right now. The wave is not even close. Oh, maybe it doesn't matter. There, there's no help coming. So uh, now the teleport comes out. Banana able to stay alive with the hostile takeover. Just for good measure, Spoozy has to flash out over. Well, he doesn't have flash. He just leaves over the wall. I didn't see exactly what happened. Maybe I'm losing my mind. Cards gets... I think Cards went the taunt flash there, but he gets rooted out. Yeah, oh. now still looking for a little bit more. Hadio pretty low, but Lost can't quite punish that. Spoozy has sub-100 health, and I... Oh, Lost has the Calibrum now. Does he have the sniper shot? He does! Lost is 5-0 and oh now on the Aphelios. My bold take is that we're going to be watching this bottom lane a lot. Because uh, really, I feel like the only way for Pantheon Nico to play, you, know, you can't just sit there. I, I think the only way they can play is just by going crazy aggressive. This could be a kill on Yabby. Yeah, he's nice able flash. to flash away from the ult, so it's not the extra 300 gold for Dallas for no reason. He's trying to get the punish down. Just not a whole lot of spells left in the tank, and the E on the pike will finish him off. So the solo kill for Dallas... Not able to get the big cash out, though, from the death from below. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> instead, he has to settle for the paltry normal kills worth of gold. I don't know. This this game's all over the place. I, I don't know what the goal is for, for TAV or for Rodham. I, I guess for Rodham, you have a 5-0 Philios at 7 minutes, so... You just want to keep that going. Cardinals building hole breaker, so that's funny. And then on the other side, I don't know. It, it kind of looks like you just want to go go kill people a lot. <laughs> you have a kill lane bot, you have Pike mid, and then you have Lee Sin jungle. Looks like they just want to look for plays and, and just oh, brag out the victory. Snow Life gets his own red buff. That's something. Uh, and now with Smoozy roaming up, Cards is in quite a bit of trouble getting ignited down, and Souter is going to participate in his first kill of the game with that Q, but it does go over to Smoozy. Just a little bit of an overextension, looking for the red buff. Couldn't quite get the smite. I don't know if it was off cooldown or, or what, because Snow Life definitely got smite early before he had the follow-up Q. It was a nice window of uh, opportunity if we had it, but... Lost is still hanging around. Oh, the kill just isn't quite there. The pop blossom from Hadio keeps him alive. And Banana going to fall to the turret. The hostile takeover is going to eventually tick him down. As, uh, yeah, he chose die, unfortunately. So yeah, uh, it's a 200 gold lead now for TAV. Um, yeah, I think the thing if you're Rodham here is you want to you wanna focus on, on some coordinated... Uh, plays here with your Aphelios, you know, you want to do less less topside invading and and yeah. uh, tower diving on flashing under towers, Renata, you know, you want to do a little Ooh, more Yabby with play. the stopwatch into the Shen ult, they'll call wow. in cards, they're going to at least ward off Spoozy for now, the Q almost finishes him off anyway. Now the death from below turns him into an egg, but that actually doesn't get him the cut just yet, as Dallas trying to commit for it with Pickaxe steaming his way on in, he'll get the kick, Dallas still has the flash, and Pickaxe should eventually finish him off, he'll get the shutdown, 450 gold into his pocket, as Yabby is, uh, Successfully baited with the Anivia egg. Do we know what 
Is there like some personal player history that has warranted the, this lane swap of Yabby and Dallas both into the mid lane? Um, I don't think so. Is there... I'm just trying to figure out why I'm watching what I'm watching. I, I don't know either. <laughs> I also don't know why Souter is in this game when he wasn't in the last one. And I don't know if like Ooh. this is the starting lineup or this is the sub. Um, Yabby's out of mana, so he can't really fight back as Hadio is able to finish him off. They lane swapped and we said, that's funny, let's do that. Sure, yeah. Okay. Because they were 05 and impossible to hit playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought, I thought with, with the rod of I... playoffs on the line, I, I thought I would be watching something off. Yeah, uh, they're going to engage on the Cardinals and the hook from Dallas not quite going to land. Not able to find the E either. Um, Cards really can't find his way out of this one, though. Yeah, Dallas will eventually finish him off. I, nice. Yeah, you would think that the 2-0 would be valuable because I think game score is a tiebreaker at some point. Yeah, um, I think I actually saw <laughs> Yevi saying that in their team chat or something. He's like, oh, wait, well, did it matter that we dropped the game? <laughs> But yeah. Um, Anyways, yeah, Yabby's <laughs> getting ganked again. This is just the roaming kill squad at this point. As Dallas over the wall with the death from below, means that they'll pick up a couple of extra uh, cuts of that kill. Yep. I mean, honestly, Anivia is just a sitting duck, like it at this stage in the game you know you don't even have the lost chapter yet i really am praying that we don't see the full zanya's purchase yeah the ult from renata not quite wow. able to finish that one off i i guess she would get credit for the dragon steal if she were able to get it with that but uh lost trying to kite his way back away and just gets his head kicked off by snow life it's a shutdown going to the Lee sin and uh unfortunately for our tm uh, that was that was their big hope they they had a lot of that Riding on Lost, and um, can't really counterplay the the point and click R. I think the, I think the fight or die might have come out a little unfortunately. Ooh. Yeah, they'll uh, turn back on the pickaxe as well. Banana trying to stay alive underneath his tower. He'll get one. I don't think that's ramped up quite enough to get Dallas. Ooh. Yeah. Um, but they'll trade one back. First kill for <laughs> Banana of the game, and now cards is getting the range versus melee experience in the top lane. Feels like TAV is is just doing some goofy plays for the sake of goofy plays and then they just keep working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that feels pretty accurate. Um They're uh Except they're zipping the around the map. Yabby seems targeted. That that seems intentional. Oh. That was a lot of damage, actually, from that uh, electric U proc. So Souter gets the solo kill on cards in the top lane. Um, yeah, Yabby with the full Zanya's is his first item. Um, there it is. Now, maybe, he, now he'll be safe. Maybe that'll help protect him against the, the Pykel and the Lee Sin. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I mean, I I don't wanna, I don't like to laugh too much at our boys, but the, <laughs> yeah, lost oh. trying to kite his way out. Banana gets kind of caught in the middle of everything and taken down even through the Shen shield, and lost maybe next on the menu. The hook not quite gonna land though from Dallas and Yabby and Lost trying to wave clear as best they can now with Hadio and Dallas threatening the. Bone Skewer going to land, but the big ult from Ooh. Loss gets the double shutdown oh. for him. A nice double kill as the Crystallize is actually pretty nice from Yabby, but they're not going to be able to track down Hadio at the end of that one. Yeah. Well, I mean, turns out you've still got the Aphelios. It's a 6-1 Aphelios is as strong as a 6-0 and Aphelios. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know, I mean... They, that that's still intact, but you've got some big things you got to fix in in your top and your mid lane right now. Yeah, pickaxe uh, gets spotted on the ward. Well, he spots both of them, and then I I don't know. That was also a thing that just happened, but he's out of there, so we don't have to think yeah. about it too much more. It's a <laughs> it's a three thousand gold lead for TAV, 
and they're playing like they have about a 10,000 gold lead as they're just diving underneath the turret. They get the kick onto Lost, into the oh. Pop Blossom, into the Cannon ult. You get the hostile takeover, but it only keeps him alive for a, an extra second. Is now Dallas looking for Yabby at the end of this one. And they connect the Q? Connect Ooh. anything? Connect wow. four? Not quite. Although Yabby's just going to wait for him. And uh. <laughs> he'll get turned into an egg. That one's sunny side up as Dallas finishes him off. It's almost really crazy. He he wind walled uh, Lee Sin out, or he walled Lee Sin out of the queue. Wind walled. Oh, um, yeah, I don't know. That's one of those just play safe mid moments, you know? <laughs> yeah. Come on, guys, just sit under tower. Like. Yeah, they've only got four ults that can access you under there. Don't worry about it. Um, Snow Life is going to find the 1v1 potentially here on Pickaxe. He'll kick him back in. The shield's actually pretty nice, sure and die. they'll get the shutdown. Doesn't even need yeah. to fight or die. Now he might need to. Who's <laughs> going to walk in? Um, with Lost what here, this probably isn't going to work <laughs> out super well for Spoozy. Um, gets a lot of value out of that shield, but it doesn't really matter too much. <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps happening, guys. <laughs> Uh, the only no. Dal like Dallas. Okay, I was like, if Dallas just walked up and queued red buff here, it would be very incredibly on brand for this game. Ooh. Yeah, he's dead. That's some burst though from Hadio. I guess he is f four and one on the <laughs> Nico at this point. Hook from Dallas, not going to be able to find Banana, as uh, he's got enough happy feet. This is. Again, it feels super far ahead for TAV. It's not actually like that significant in terms of gold, but just because of the champions, this is rough as they pull the cannon and the Pantheon ults at the same time. Ooh, for two extra whoa, kills, whoa, whoa. you get the bonus cuts, and that's yeah. gonna help snowball the the gold lead. Um, I I think part of the so this gold gold lead is mostly in the solo lands, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's being a bit accentuated by the fact that solo lane purchases on the side of RTM, I think may be less, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'll get called out in chat by someone, but I think that the Zhonya's steel caps and the hole breaker for solo laners are, are a little less than ideal, you know? Um, um I mean, I think the, the fact they're well. each down thousands of gold. I think the hole breaker is probably the most efficient item you can buy, but I it also doesn't oh, matter if your goal is yeah. to group up with your team and use your ultimate. Um, this is a little unfortunate for Banana. It just gets caught by the Hex Gates, and now Hadyo and Spoozy will take home their third tower of the game down here in the bottom lane. Yeah. Now the snowball is well and truly on for TAV. Yeah. I, I mean, as far as gold efficiency, right, Horebreakers, like, literal gold for your, like, stat efficiency, I think it's not bad, but... I think with the the way the game is, I does he even have hole breaker damage? No, we have zero. <laughs> I don't think he's getting the most use out of it. And then I already talked about the Anivia build, so I won't go back to it. But uh, I, I'll, although I don't know, I don't know if there's like any purchases where I'm like, wow, this is game changing when you're down three thousand gold. So maybe it's just tough. Oh, that's a big slicing maelstrom. And Souter's actually the one that gets caught out, but he'll find the double kill. Trying to get the triple, but not quite enough there to get all the way through that. Hook somehow lands onto Yabby through Banana. The He's able to dodge out of the death from below, but Snow Life not quite able to find the Q, but there is the follow-up from Dallas. And Yabby eventually burns down. They'll track down Renata as well. And TAV, uh, they're, they're pretty far ahead. They're, they're doing the good plays. Now... <laughs> what scares me and I know I'm doing like a little spectator scoreboard hack but how much of this game there is still left I don't know if I can <laughs> take it man. this is this is just the gold <laughs> platinum experience you know um, sometimes you get like actual it... banger games and everything's well contested uh, but then more often than not, it seems like a lot of the games are just kind of like this. You know, you, you get one-sided stomps, and you have to, you know, talk about how Pike is short for Pykel, and you're really disappointed that the Ruin King game didn't actually confirm that in the lore. Um, oh, yeah? Despite the fact that you played the entire thing, hoping for that tidbit of information. That was really the whole reason you got the game, right? Yeah. Um, 
also, it's, it's a pretty good game. If Elden Ring didn't exist, I would tell you to buy uh, Rune King, but since Elden Ring exists, go get that instead. Um. Oh. <laughs> mm. I don't don't have time. I have to... Well, yeah, I can play this league. I have to keep my trundle fresh for, for Terror Academy. Yeah, you gotta get the oh. the trundle Jarvan 2 trick of Legends. Yeah. Um, Dallas finds another execution. Yabby. Whoa, gets the Spoozy. Shen Ultimate. Spoozy is going hard <laughs> in the paint, but a little too hard there as Lost finishes him off. Yabby able to stay alive with the Hostile Takeover from Renata. That's the big combo, though, is the Hostile Takeover plus Hourglass combo. Uh, the kick on the banana <laughs> might not have been exactly what Snow Life wanted, but uh, it's going to work out for him. Is They'll get one kill. He's going to continue to auto down. It's just Hadio uh, and Snow Life. But oh. It's a double kill for the Lee Sin. Yabby reses, but it's just not in time. And now cards still technically alive under the tower. Yeah, not for too much longer. The triple kill goes to Snow Life, and Souter uh, is able to teleport in at the end of that one. Wasn't involved in the play in any way, shape, or form, but neither was Pickaxe. So it was a 4v4, four, four four, and that's uh, four kills for TAV. You know what I will say is Snow Life has played a better Lee Sin than I thought he was going to after... Uh... What I was saying earlier was the only thing I really remembered about his Janna was what happened at level one in the first game. Yeah. So I didn't have high hopes for the Lee Sin, but, you know, it's, it's been pretty good. Yeah, I luckily Janna and Lee Sin are pretty similar champions. So when yeah, he's working yeah, on those he's, Janna he's mechanics, warmed up. He's, he's really got the Lee Sin uh, in the bag. Yeah. I mean, we all know the popular move Insect, which was popularized by Insect, the most famous Janna player to ever flash behind someone and press his ultimate. Now Lee Sin players are just copying the move, right? Yeah, that, that sounds pretty accurate to, to what happened. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's two shutdowns that actually went to ROTM. They they tracked down the Pantheon and the Kennen. So, um, you know they're they're alive in this game technically. The Nexus hasn't died, and there's still like 15 more minutes left in the game timer. So, <laughs> I it. I'm gonna hate it, it if this gets depressingly used. close by the end. Um, that's gonna be the uh, the real banger. In comes. Hadio not really able to fight a whole lot with the Pop Blossom. Instead, goes into the stopwatch. The Renata ultimate just getting a little distance for him is lost. Gets another shutdown Wait. on the end of that. He's uh, actually the strongest man in the game by eight gold. <laughs> the big eight yeah. gold. That's not a the, minor the eight huge. gold lead. Uh, Spoozy's just going to continue only going in, which I appreciate about him. Um... I, I honestly don't know what's happening anymore. They got the dragon, and they're going to get another kill on the pike. In comes Souter, though. There's a lot of low health bars. Slicing Maelstrom will find a double kill for him. Snow Life on the other side, running away to the Krug. Souter still looking to scrap it out, but Lost is just so big. It's hard to finish him off. Lost, unstoppable. Now 15-5 and five on the Aphelios. <laughs> Um, Snow uh, Life is still just hanging around in the jungle, chose not to recall, instead looking for the assassination on Lost. Does he have the extra Q on the end? I don't know what... I guess that's Death Stance was, was mitigating yeah. that damage, but not quite enough to save him there. I... Yeah. Well, now Lost is all the that, strongest man in the game by 2,000 I... gold. So. <laughs> I don't even have, like, an analytical perspective on that. It it feels like we're just gonna watch this happen for fifteen minutes and then someone's gonna win. I don't know. It it No, it Ooh, well, Pickaxe. Spoozy looking for pickaxe. It was one of those uh we had the TriCast day with both plat teams playing and the Masters team. And that was oh, like yeah. really disconcerting to swap between the Masters and the Platinum games. Like <laughs> It's funny how the mechanics, like, Platinum players have pretty good mechanics in general. Yeah. Like, every once in a while, you'll see something funny happen. Uh, but the macro and the, like, decision-making in-game is just quite different. Well, um, and, I mean, I've watched and played in a, a good amount of games at this level, I think. And this is not a normal game. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> This one is a little absurd. Baron's being picked up. 
why I mean Yes it can be. Yeah. There's there's really no ability for RTM to really contest that, so it's gonna go into yeah. the pockets of T A V and one would hope that they would set up uh set up some pushing waves, you know, get maybe two of these lanes pushing, collapse down with all their ults and just end the game, but um we might be in for something I mean, special here as uh, how do I like is, this? They're going to get the pick on Spoozy just to start with, but now the rest of them coming in kind of one at a time. Dallas is in. That's a big Renata ult. Actually is able to stall out the oh. end gauge. They'll finish off Hadio as well. It's a double kill for Pickaxe, and the extra kill goes to Banana. And yeah, that's exactly how you don't do a Baron setup. Yeah. I mean, Spoozy, man. <laughs> He's got to chill just a little bit. Like, I, I like the aggressiveness, but um, maybe a little discretion on some of his W targets might be good. It's a little discretion on on anything. I, I don't know. We are we are full sending it, and, you know, it is pretty entertaining. So I bet he was having fun. Isn't that all that really matters? Yeah. I guess when, uh, you're, when you're 05, I guess that really, that probably is all that matters. So there's a there's a Dota quote. I'm gonna paraphrase it because the word has fallen out of a lot of favor. Um, but it, it's when the game goes full fiesta, you have to go with it. Because if you only go half fiesta, you're lost. <laughs> um, I, I, it's going even further beyond full <laughs> fiesta. I feel busy is. I mean, he's you know, if you didn't press E, I think he might have just died to that Aphelios turret. By the way. Yeah, um, Lost has 16 kills. He's got three and a yeah. half items in this game where a lot of people are, I, I guess they're they're right around that item spike. So he's he's not that far ahead of everybody, but still, that the champion just gets a lot of scaling out of out of these items. And now he finishes up his fourth item, which is a death stance. That's a that's an interesting pickup. Do you do you like that as yeah. the fourth item? Yeah, I was gonna say I. I like that. I'm interested to see if he goes for a Maw or a GA or what here, because I, th I think that at this point you're like, okay, I have the most gold in the game. I do enough damage, you know. At some point, he's just going to be getting singled out by this Kennen, by this Pike, that's Pantheon, you know. Um, needs to just pick up some defense so that unless he's mispositioned, it's going to be pretty hard to just straight up one shot him. Yeah, this is only dragon number three represented right now for TAV. So RTM choosing to get mid prio and try to force something here. They'll get the teleport out of Souter, and now the flank coming in, the Pantheon ult coming down from Spoozy. In comes a big slicing maelstrom. They're trying to get on to the Aphelios. Watch him on the back line. He's still relatively full health, fighting it out with Snow Life. They've managed to set up a, a at least something with just the two of them left alive. It's a double kill for the Aphelios. It's, Lost is basically the star of the show. You've got to keep all the eyes on him as Souter and Smoozy still trying to track him down in the jungle. And Souter goes over the wall, but Smoozy doesn't. The stun lands. They're looking. They're going to take down Cardinals, but Lost is still alive. That's four total kills for him and two more shutdowns going to Lost. Uh, and uh, Lost uh, probably had team wipe levels of damage there if Lee Sin didn't fly onto him and block his ult. Lee Sin took the solo uh, Inferno Molt as it was traveling out into a group, into a bunch of bodies. So, kind of a nice block there from Snow Life. Kind of a weird fight. I'm not shocked that Boozy died there at the end. But... <laughs> How do you want to. Oh, yeah. Sorry, the, the dragon started up here. Dallas looking for the hook, going to pull in Pickaxe. They have enough damage to burst him out. They get the W for the hostile takeover, but he can't quite get the takedown that he needs to stay alive. And now Dallas is going to trek down Renata Glask, um, one Ooh. of two champions in the game with the last name for some reason. I don't know why that was so important that they included it. Um, Nice fancy feat, though, from Banana, but Dallas is very fast, has the Ghost Water Dive, and the Bone Skewer is dodged. The E Ooh. has the toss back. He's still alive? All right. We take those. Well, nice if, job, Banana. If they didn't put her last name in, then the 
the miss it's miss glask or whatever the voice line is it's miss glask to you or something wouldn't make a lot of sense you know what if you didn't know her last name and she had voice lines about her last name i feel like there's other champions in the game with last names and you just no kind of... there aren't what's okay. a really his last name so like jarvin's is like bright crown or some shit um well, well tom's is is kench well yeah that's the other uh guy with the last name <laughs> new news is and willem right um <laughs> new, new <laughs> william that's his full name i believe yeah <laughs> uh misfortune is is fortune um as it turns out mm. <laughs> like there's a, oh. there's enough uh anyway dallas Going in for Watch the hook, out. finds a banana. Here comes Spoozy. Yeah, here comes Spoozy. He's trying, he's just kind of walking around in circles during this fight. They actually knock uh, Aphelios out of the fight, though, and that's the shutdown that they need. It's a double kill for Kennen, as they'll be able to finish off cards at the end as well. Uh, the Guardian Angel popped immediately, and not really too much avail there for Lost, as now TAV are going to peel back and go for Baron. <laughs> I thought Spoozy was going to die there at the end again with his ult. That's crazy. That's probably like the first engagement he's lived through. I hope I didn't speak too soon, man. I hope. Yeah, they're going to take the Inhibitor and the Baron at the same time. It's the Ken and, Ken and Leeson duo, though. That's not the, the most damage. Dallas? Not quite able to find the death from below. Oh. And, uh, yeah, you cursed him. There's, there's the caster curse <laughs> from two days ago. Uh, that, was, that was a caster promise. I don't know. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was sure that was going to happen. Well, Baron uh, on three members for TAV. They've got to wait about 30 seconds, though, for Dallas and Spoozy to come back to life. Um, yeah, RTM has only killed two towers, so still a lot of, lot of standing gold if they're able to win a fight. They're down about 10,000, but they have... I really like that. There's a lot of standing gold available. Yeah, there's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of towers. It's like, a, it's like watching a, a tough series and saying, well, they've got a lot of room to improve, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, Lost is still the strongest man in the game, still by about 2,000. The next strongest man. Uh, you might not guess, but it's Kennen. So. Might have guessed. He's kind of... He's doing a little one-shotting. I just look at but... those crooked numbers in the kill column for Hadio and Dallas, and I would figure it's them, but he's got some yeah, CS, yeah, that's and true. I guess that that's what it is. Um... Oh, uh, I mean, well, we've got Drake coming up here in a minute and a half. That is Hextech Soul or TAB, so I'd like to see Rodham trying to deny that. But it's also a little spooky because you have to wonder if, if you can't get a good angle on it, do you just give it? Because you will lose the game at this point if you lose the team fight. Or if you lose it badly, you know. Yeah, I. it's also what value do you have on this game where you've roll swapped and gone into a weird team comp. But um, Hadio is kind of caught, but it's going to be Pickaxe that falls first. It's a double Ooh. kill for Lost as they're trying to set up and make sure Souter can't get in. It's the Leeson split push right now on the top side, uh, kind of countered by cards on the bottom side. As, yeah. Um, that's two kills, and they're not... There's not really a whole lot of objectives to actually get off of that, but they... Uh, Maybe mid? They have the Dragon this Vision, the, the back, and set up for Dragon now? Yeah, I <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if backing there is quite the right decision, but everyone's going to, in theory, Dallas and Hattie are going to be able to, to bop on over through Hex Gates by the time Dragon spawns. So, And you can't just start it and try and rush it in their face, because Kennen will just fly in. He's going to... Yeah. have got pretty good vision control, though. Speezy trying to clear it out, but going to miss a few, I think. Yeah, Lost is full build, so they're trying to hand over some of these waves to Yabby and yeah. to cards on the top side. Uh, ooh, look at the stun. That's actually a really nice little uh, little tech there from from Yabby, but in comes the engage from 
Spoozy, he's onto the back line. Big, uh, actually, a huge cannon ult. It's going to eliminate wow. Lost from there. It's a double kill for Hadio as Pickaxe burning down. Triple kill for Hadio. And now Yabby gets turned into an egg. This one, uh, scrambled. It's a quadra kill for Hadio. And now Cardinals is the last line of defense. This is what he built the hole breaker for. It's time to hunt alone. It's time to hunt them all. Yeah, it's a, it's a really nice kick from Snow Life, actually, to get that start off. Uh, a nice, I think he jumps over. He's out of vision, so there's not a lot they can do about him. And then he just kick flashes uh, Lost into the team, followed up instantly by Sauter, just gets one shot. Spoozy stunned and... the minion, but that was enough to, to bait cards into going in, I guess. And uh, that's the game. So we're tied at one. That was 35 minutes of League of Legends that we watched uh, and 80 uh, kills. <laughs> that, I don't know. I don't have anything. I don't have anything to say after what I watched. <laughs> that was silly. Just goofy. All right. Well, we'll see if uh, if we get a serious Rodham turnaround for game three, or if more shenanigans prevail. Um, we'll be right back with game three. <laughs> Uh, last one is 987. Yep. Man. I don't know. I I feel like I should add more to say about that game, but it was... I, we went from a game that was kind of boring to, to that. <laughs> Just wild mess. Yeah. Yeah, be. I know. Oi, oi, oi. Alright. I'm ready whenever you are. Oh, not quite. I didn't swap the scoreboard. As soon as I do that, I'm ready. Yeah, we're, we're not about all of the professionalism on this stream, because, like, who am I responsible to right now? We don't have a sponsor. I, I guess yeah. technically you guys who sub, but there's only, like, 14 of you that sub right now so um you know if i offend somebody maybe uh, I'll, I'll consider it but i i have heard exactly zero comments positively or negatively about my casting this entire split so uh i'm just vibing right now <laughs> i think I, i've thanked you for the cast I, i've given you some positive comments i i guess that's a positive comment we'll, we'll yeah, take it uh, we have to take those <laughs> you're gonna take that and you're gonna <laughs> like it okay All right. anyways <laughs> um <laughs> so but yeah i don't have a sponsor i'm not trying to to uh broadcast this to you know a wide audience of people it's basically just you goons that watch in and sometimes the other teams who come in and flame you guys like whatever jacob lee 12 i know a jacob lee anyways all right well i, I don't think it's this jacob lee but i know a jacob lee. Maybe, maybe you do. Maybe they're one and the same. Uh, we got game three. Let's uh, yeah. let's see what we got. Uh, three, two, one, go. All right. Uh, this way we at least have some background noise for us just going around. He's the only Jacob Lee. There, there's never been another one, actually. Yeah. That sounds I'm legit. <laughs> not going to ask him to reveal any details to explain himself, but I am curious. There's a, there's a world where it is the Jacob Lee, you know? <laughs> um, all right, UBC Souter in the top lane on the J Snow Life, returning to the jungle this time on Vi. Dallas in mid playing Kaisa and Hadio returning his role on the Nico with Spoozy playing Blitzcrank. Yep. Over on the red side, we got Orn Denols 29 on the Orn. Pickaxe on the Volley Bear. Lost in rotation on Syndra. Yabiyinda and I'm to Banana playing Lucian Braum bottom lane. Uh, it seems to be a bit of a return to form for the Rodham team, I think. By that I mean they're playing their primary positions. <laughs> yeah, they're they're playing primary positions. These feel like a lot of comfort picks for them. Uh, Cards is doing his best V Bon impression though, just the Shen into the Orn pick. Um, yep. Kind of miss the Nardinals <laughs> and the Gwendinals, but I mean, Gwen's not a champion, so don't actually pick that one. Yeah. Uh, 
I, I feel bad about that. I I really like Gwen. Um, yeah, I I never even got to play her jungle in in a comp game. So you pick her to flex and then just send her top every game. So that... Oh, the level one gank. Not quite gonna find home there from Spoozy. And you know you get the question mark emote from uh, from Lost. That seems fair. Uh, I wonder if they're yeah. actually going to... No, they're not going to use that setup. I, I was kind of curious if he'd just hover around mid for a while just to make sure that he didn't fall behind in XP. Um, but going to head down down on XP to go help out Hadio. Make sure he doesn't get completely destroyed by Yabby and Banana here when he hits level 2. Yeah. I'm interested to see the Spoozy Blitz crank after the Spoozy Pantheon. Um, it feels like there's a non-zero chance of uh it being a little goofy you know yeah um pickaxe is going in for the raptor steal he's going to be spotted by dallas he'll steal away a couple of the chickens but it's a little damage back over the wall uh they have the hook if spoozy can find a good angle and pull him underneath the tower this is kind of the the danger zone against blitzcrank when if you get a little too overconfident yeah meanwhile the gank in the top lane from snow life gonna get the flash out of cards off screen and I haven't even really talked about what's happening here in the jungle, but uh, obviously Snow Life started on Pickaxe's top side and cleared out the whole thing solo. Um, which I actually like. I, I like this. So you're kind of verticaling with your, your Jace Orn matchup, right? So Jace can play as aggressively as he wants because he knows Volibear is not going to be anywhere near his lane. Um, free range uses first strike. And then. The bottom He's side done on the wall, the ignite and the auto oh, for first wow. blood, the solo kill for lost. I really like watching his Syndra. Um always yeah. always a joy to cast that one, and he'll pick up first blood in this game. Yeah, it's well played, it's flash for flash. Got room for future plays. I mean You've got a volley bear now, you're playing Syndra, your volley bear has flash up, guys it is not. Should be another kill here in the next five minutes. But, but yeah, Pickaxe is going to have to play a little bit of catch-up, I think, on his camps. I mean, he's he's looking all right right now, but Snow Life still got his top camps to farm, and Pickaxe is now going to walk out to his respawning raptors, I guess. Which actually doesn't, that doesn't feel bad. That doesn't feel terrible, you know? Oh, I'm supposed to praise uh, Yabby now. Uh, Yabby, you're absolutely insane. Uh, I have no other words about you. Just an absolutely crazy motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't even sound like you meant that in the sound like a like a clinical comment. <laughs> well, so like my my memories of Yabienda are the original Rodham team playing against his KSU team with Vibon and Yabby. And Yabby oh, yeah. just like diving turrets on Tristana in one game. And I was like, Oh yeah, that's just that champion, you know, kinda kinda broken right now. And then the next game he starts diving turrets on Kogma. And at that point I had no idea what was going Whoa. on with my life. Yabby's gonna get hooked in though. Gets ignited, trying to kite his way out, just not quite enough to get his way on out of there. Banana gets rooted up by the tingle barbs and it's a double kill for Hadio. Yep. I, that's a nice hook. That's the blitzcrank. Pretty much the power of it. Looks like they were really struggling in lane. Yeah, Dallas walking forward, but the Unleashed Power is he hits six immediately and just drops it on Dallas in the mid lane for his second kill of the game. So lost um, pretty far ahead now in this Cinder Kaisa matchup. Retroactive I like the... Uh, unlucky. <laughs> One of my favorite things, I mean, Pickaxe, unlucky on the flash there. I feel like they probably could have called that Lost had it, but um, my, one of my favorite animations in the game is when Volibear presses Q, but then isn't running, because then he just stands there on all fours, like he. <laughs> <laughs> I, you probably won't get to see it, so you don't get to see it very often. But right there, after he flashed towards Dallas, and then Dallas just died, he was just standing there on all fours over his body, like a, I don't know, like a big old bear. Yeah, I like he he does the grunt too, so it's just, uh, and then he's on all fours. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a solid choice. I, I I'll go with that one. Um, got the the support jungle two v two, but Gabby's gonna interrupt that one and pick up the kill with the piercing light. The hammer boy bouncy time from downtown will knock Spoozy up, and they'll be able to finish him off in short order. The double kill going to Yabby into. Yep, 
It's a really nice shroom from cards to help pick up that second kill. Should be Dragon Governor going over to RTM. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see all the plays going through the middle side of the map. I think that would be kind of the smart way to do it because right now Dallas, this Kaisa is looking kind of like a black hole of pressure and lost is a little big. So, you know, any any plays you can get that involve both mid laners should be winning, you know. Yeah, Yabby yeah, taking a lot of damage here from Ahadio. I, he's consistently able to find the correct Nico out of that. Flashes forward for the Piercing Light. They'll pick up the kill. Oh. Can they get the stun on Swoozy? They can, but not really the follow-up just yet as Pickaxe is busy doing the dragon. He'll finish it off and RTM off to a 5-2 lead with their first dragon in their pocket. They'd look where Syndra has to play. Oh... Yeah. I think Vi's... Oh my goodness. Yeah, Kaisa just can't walk up. Almost gets uh, assassinated by the ult. Has to dash away with the ignite ticking down. Now Spoozy may be looking for something. Does he have the long range hook? It's. I don't think he actually gets in range for it at any point as Lost is able to walk it on out. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. If if I'm Dallas, I'm, I'm flaming snow life. <laughs> right there, man. <laughs> Syndra is literally under my tower. Looking for it, the oh. flash Q, and they'll wow. have the damage shut down to Snow Life. Actually, no assist for Dallas, maybe, uh, unfortunately <laughs> there. But, um, you know, they get the shutdown, they get the, the gold back, and it's back to a 1,000 gold lead now. Yeah, I mean, better than nothing. Yeah. I mean, I mean it, it's good, it's good. But if, if you're Dallas, you're maybe not extremely thrilled at, oh no <laughs> oh, no <laughs> wow i didn't wow. think that would be that much damage uh yabby's gonna get rooted up the pop blossom is gonna be enough to secure that with smoozy's help and Ooh, spoozy almost helped himself with the <laughs> aftershock proc yeah and the volleybird i mean maybe a hot take he does a little bit of damage no yeah. yes he actually kills that ward before it goes invisible? That's kind of yeah, insane. His uh, Q is an auto reset, yeah. Oh, huh. all right. But now, uh... He hasn't been back to base yet this game. He's sitting on the the boots plus uh, refillable pot. <laughs> he went back once. I guess he went back once and bought brown boots. For boots. Yeah. <laughs> Got a full, I mean, brown paper bag is basically full build. Oh. <laughs> Be even better if it were free ass boots, though. You know. <laughs> uh, I love getting that. Uh, the perfect inventory for junglers when you've used all your smite charges and you're just walking around with only a refillable potion. And you get to do your little Orn cosplay, you know. Well, pickaxe walking in to help out his buddy Orn. Gonna get the flash out of the Jace. This seems like not a fun matchup for uh, for Orn to be in, but uh, Cards is navigating it pretty well. Yeah, I think it is hard. I, I think that, you know, again, one of the maybe biggest upsides of the matchup is you have a lot of ganks set up on this. Oh, nice flash. Yeah, nice flash by Lost to avoid some of the damage coming through. Can he turn this one back around, now getting his cooldowns back up? Does he have the stun that he needs? He'll finish off the Blitzkrieg. Oh, he almost oh, had Dallas wow. there. He had to flash over the wall wow. in order to avoid that one. Double Pop Blossom from Hadio. Banana gets rooted up underneath the tower. Just a little damage necessary to take him down, but he's kiting it back out. The exhaust onto Yabby and Souter will to the skies and knock him down. And Hadio Kane. will finish that one off. He's got the Tangle Thorns for the kill. Tangle Barbs for the kill. Something like that. Sure, yeah. Tangle Thorns, Tangle Barbs. Yeah. And Lost. Putting on a little bit of a show there, mid. Way he was facing out of a uh, tower range there and out of Kaisa range was pretty perfect. Cause they were trying to pincer him in there, but. Him really close to being a, a huge disaster for TAV. All in all, it's actually a 1k lead for the blue side. I think most of that is going to stem from. Uh, where is that even coming from? I didn't even check the gold. 
Uh, top lane is where it's going to be. It's the kill plus the Ooh. 20 gold, or the 20 CS. So I think Off that's the then... biggest lead, and then bot will have a little one, but maybe not anymore as Pickaxe just goes and takes down Spoozy with the help of Yab Yinda. And now Snow Life might have found uh, Cardinals being a little too aggressive in his jungle. Sonder with the Shock Blast, trying to help him out. Vault Breaker for the last little bit of damage is there for Snow Life, and they'll get a little pick up on the top side. Uh, they always pick an on Orn, man. Uh, we got the Frozen Heart Rush coming here from cards. Yeah, I know Firelight's a, a big... Um, he, he likes it. I, I was trying to think of a word to follow that up. Enjoyer. Enjoyer. Frozen heart big enjoyer. Frozen Heart yeah. Enjoyer. Yeah. I think that's what the kids say these days. Yeah. The word I had was proponent, but that's like just a dumb word, right? Uh, so, sure, yeah, Enjoyer, yeah. much better. Um, <laughs> now that's a smart word. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Hook not quite going to land off of the <laughs> Assault and Battery. Dallas is still getting chunked through. They'll be able to finish off Snow Life with the auto, and Dallas probably not too long for this world as he's running off, trying to find the help from his Jace, and I don't think that there's really much coming. Volley Bear on him, and Banana finishes it off with the Winner's Bite. Lost even able to grab Spoozy underneath the tower and survive. And ROTM again flips it right back to a 1,000 gold lead. Or actually, it's like 200 for themselves. It's not even... But I was saying, a non-zero chance that Spoozy Blitzcrank gets a little goofy. Yeah. Uh, uh, Hadio looking for Yabby doesn't quite have that insane amount of damage that we saw last game. Walking forward, the melee range culling from Yab Yinda and Hadyo probably needs a blanket because he just got culled. Oh. Uh, I'll let that one wash over you. Just just take that one all in. Alright. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Know about that <laughs> I just don't know what I do know is Jace from Arcane is uh, putting the hammer down I think is an appropriate phrase for that character yeah but, I mean never it, mind. it's unwinnable <laughs> for OTM honestly like they they picked two arcane champions so it's pretty done yeah. though I mean we, we didn't even get the jinx or, or the Caitlyn in return when we get to the team fights, I'm pretty sure it's going to be just like that scene uh, oh. with Jason by fighting. Ooh. That was also a scene, the one for one trade in the mid lane, but it's the yeah. Blitzcrank that picks up the kill, unfortunately, Ooh. for TAV and Ooh. Lost. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Continuing to get bigger. Yeah. Uh, uh, lost having a really good game. Uh, Pickaxe kind of quietly uh, participating in, you know, almost exclusively positive plays. I really like this Volley Bear pick with this team. I mean, you've got a lot of... Yeah, they're looking for the dive. They'll be able to turn off the turret. That's a throwback to Lexus, but unfortunately, <laughs> not going as well as that dive did. Lost getting tracked down. Doesn't quite have the damage to chunk through, and it's two kills. Bunch of shutdowns going the way of TAV, and they'll get a mid push. Yavi kind of equalizes with the, the bot lane okay. turret take, and this one will fall apart as well. So gold is going to be exactly even at uh, 15 20 into this game i gotta stop just mentioning individuals because you know i said jason Marcane is putting the hammer down he gets ganked and dies i say pickaxe is quietly having a good game only positive plays that mid lane dive happens it's uh i don't know what the fuck there's three blitzcranks oh all right <laughs> Pretty spooky. Imagine you go to like face check dragon or something and three blitzcranks walk at you. How are you gonna dodge? Yeah, I don't know. At least one of them's real, so. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> that was a little goofy. Wish they kept doing that. The two blitzcrank tower beat down. 
Yeah, uh, Pickaxe coming in. The teleport in from cards as well. They're looking to track down Smoozy and Hadio. <laughs> They've even got Lost coming in as well. There's no tower left to run to as <laughs> another culling comes through. Cards picks up the kill. They'll get the stun down onto Smoozy. They get two picks, and that's as clean as you like in the bottom lane for Return of the Middle Sticks. Yeah. No life, new one to get out of town. Yeah, he was sitting in that bush, and he just finished the recall. I think it's the correct move. I think there's a lot Vi is going to do to turn that, but... I, after, after all the silliness of this series, it seemed like one of those moments where, you know, you'd fight or die. I see that we do we do have some measured play left in us. Yeah, uh, Cards has exchanged to Summoner to Summoner to port, Teleport Upgrade underscore C12, so that's nice. Um, we'll see if he gets that back. That's, I was just reading that from the chat. I don't have any particular opinion on that one. Uh, Hook not quite going to land there from Smoozy as the fight's going to break out. Pickaxe going to fall, but they'll trade out Sonder as well. It's one for one. And does our team still want to go for this? They have to be careful about a Smoozy hook over the wall, and now they don't because that's on cooldown for about 15 seconds. As Hadio walking in does get the Tangle Barbs. A lot of damage, though, from Lost. Yabby picks up one kill. Snow Life goes in with the Vault Breaker. They're trying to finish off Lost and just don't have enough damage. Shutdown goes to Yabby, and that felt like a, a big statement there from our OTM that yeah. can't quite get away with the cheeky plays this game, or maybe you can as they pull Yabby over the wall. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, it seems oh, close. teleport actually from Sonder. So Yabby in a lot of trouble, trying to fight his way out and gets shut down by the chase. Yep. I. Anyways, this game's been pretty close. Uh, wait. Oh, are they gonna? They don't have any... Oh no, they, they don't have, have any... Smite. Oh, here comes Pickaxe. All right. I don't know that this is actually enough to save it. Shock blast over the wall. Jag and retethers. Okay, banana's fine. This is all fine. It's smited. Okay, no worries. We're we're chilling. So so that series of plays into into getting on soul point feels kind of good. I think for how much of a a mess some of this game has been. Uh, at the end of the day, our team coming out on top. It feels like they're in a game winning position. You just have to avoid any egregious picks, you know, from this blitz crank. Or giving up, you know, too much poke to this Kaisa Jace. What is this I, particular I really, Kaisa build? I'm, I'm kind of curious yeah. about this one. I've seen about this top side, and I, I actually, I kind of like what they've got going on. Cause they've got Jace Kaisa, right? So they've got just a ton of poke, but then Kaisa also follows the Vi in. Oh, they found you know. Hadio. They've got the Pop Blossom just for a little bit of distance. Winner's Bite gonna track him down, and yeah, that's uh. Little overextension there from Hadio is lost now. I don't want to say quietly on a rampage, but Loudly had a got well. He got picked a couple of times, and it, it felt like he was yeah. falling off a little bit. But now that's what six kills in a row for the rampage. So he's uh he's right back up there, right back in it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, it looked like uh, Hadio might have found them, but. Uh, Yabi into flashes away from the, the pop blossom, and I think he only really connects the ult onto banana, so that's going to be a dead Nico. Flashes yeah. up now, but RTM. big power spikes coming up soon though for TAV. Yeah. They've almost got the double man immune completion, which uh, should help out their damage just a little bit, and they don't even need it as it turns out they can pick the volley bear just fine without it. Uh, Dallas will take that kill on the Kaisa and. Lost and Banana trying to kite back away. Big stun going to land the double stun on Despoozy and Hadio. Don't really want to chase too far forward. Um, Dallas is going like full AP. That's interesting. I Grit, there's no... Usually you see a Nasher's Tooth or something thrown into this build. Anyway, they're going to engage onto Lost. Get the shutdown. Two kills going to Dallas. Yeah, I, I was thinking it. it's like a Nasher's. And usually it's crown rather than ludens, right? Yeah, but I don't know. It's what, working. Whatever, whatever it I is. Guess, uh, yeah, it can't they're, be that bad, you know. They're starting on Baron. They get the teleport in from Cardinals, which is going to signal them to back off of the Baron. He's missing one longsword, but that's the current AP Kaisa build. No Nashers. 
Luden's a situational bolt are fine. I don't like that. Just feels like she's playing A Ram. Yeah. Maybe she is. Oh. Uh, we're even in gold right now, and now we're not. It's a small gold lead for TAV. It, it feels like one of those moments where some someone was playing A Ram, and they played enough A Rams against AP Kaisa, they were like, there's no way this is bad on Summoner's Rift. So they decided to test it out, and it turns out, it, yeah, it's just as annoying. I don't know if you play how much a ram, how much of an a ram enjoyer you are. Uh, you know? Just too much, honestly. That's about all I yeah. play. If I'm being honest. AP Kais is the worst. I also play a fair amount of. Uh, ram, which... Not to derail this really tense game, but like, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. A ram ban is is Teemo. Um, that that champion just should not exist in my a ram games. It's just the worst whether you get him on your team or not because the game's gonna last 90 years. And the team it's... that shouldn't win is going to win it. There's no character less fun to play against than Ash in the A-Rim. I will get rid of Teemo over Ash. I'll, I'll take that one. I, I agree that Ash is up there. Banana gets chunked through. Uh, they picked cards, which is unfortunate. Now TAV have the mid lane pressure. They've got the dragon up in an indeterminate amount of time because I never hit end this game. About 45 seconds. And Smoozie going to find another hook on to pickaxe, and they'll drop Sheila toward mid lane, break open this tower, and just continue to have all the pressure going for them. Pickaxe gets chunked through. Hadio taking a lot of damage. Lost finishes it off. A huge scatter of the week, though, into the culling from Yab Yinda. It's a triple oh, wow. kill for Yabby, and they turn it around a little too over aggressive from TAV. A really crazy. I mean, he hits the R into E combo on Syndra, which is really good for those big team stunts, and. I mean, that, it looked for a second like TAB might be on a roll, uh, just ready to start snowballing it down, but really nice play from Lost, kind of saves it, I think. Baron picked up. I, I don't know how much I like this, because I don't think that you're going to be able to get both. Uh, they have I, I mean, double smite right now with cards and pickaxe if they can just get over there in time, which it looks like they might be cards. able to, but they're going to be missing uh, lost potentially, and banana doesn't have the most health. So this is a little bit risky business from RTM as they walk in. Hook from Spoozy to start everything off. They'll chunk through pickaxe. He's burning to the ignite, but other than that, just a little unhealthy as he'll walk away. He can heal up with the smite if he needs to, and... and I guess cards is exchanging now. Hook gonna land onto Yab Yinda, and it's a shutdown going to Solder. As now the Ornhorn coming back through Hadyo. Pretty low, but not quite able to be taken down. They'll trade him for cards. Double kill, though, for the Jace as he finds another good shock blast onto Banana. The W is just oh coming through from goodness. the Kaisa. The double kill from Dallas. Lost the last line of defense for ROTM. Dallas in. The ult not quite able to finish him off, and it's an ace now for Team Ambition Valor. I, I I think, you know, I, I'm confused about the decision to, to full send there after uh, we lose Yabby into the hook. He has a good chunk of your damage, uh, even with how strong Lost is. I think that you have to accept, like, okay, we chose Baron over Soul. It's only TAV's first strike, you know. We can just push it down, you know. It, it's okay to give them a dragon. You just run it down mid, you know. But dead up for the fight because TAV's way and now the game is here we are <laughs> right back in it right like back it might be swinging for our TM but even again still three drakes for them so they're they're still feeling good they've that's that's kind of their their big advantage here right is, is every five minutes there's a huge pressure point that TAV feels obligated to play towards and our TM if they choose can play away from it right if, if they don't like the look or they feel like it's not a guaranteed fight, they can always just go push it down, take other objectives. But We have ornaments this game as well, so Cards is going to pick up his Rhymeforged Grasp. I don't think there's any of these that are particularly interesting. Do you have uh, Do you have the ornament upgrade names stored in there? Oh, I, I, I feel like we did this last them. time. But yeah. Yeah. No, I I saw. No, no, no. You you and Lane did this. I remember it. It's a little goofy. Now I I know a few of them, but. <laughs> well, we'll uh we'll see when cards 
upgrades them. I think our first one's probably going to be either the Worm Fallen Sacrifice or um. the Eye of Luden. Um, and then you've got your Turbocharged Hexperiment, potentially, on uh, on Pickaxe. And I actually don't know the one for Australia's. Um, I'm going to be entirely honest. Uh, hook going to land onto Banana, though. Spoozy gets another hook to start it off, but the ult from Orn trying to shut that one down. They'll pick off Hadio to start it off, and Spoozy will fall as well. RTM just kind of stands their ground just outside of the range of the Nico. Now Dallas really chunking through, but Yabby says no. He dashes oh. in and gets the shutdown. Yeah, they really, they really have to be careful on this chase, because this chase and this guy are putting out a lot of damage as you're trying to get up on them, but flash in from Yabby, clinches it. Might be able to take mid in hit here. The health bars are a little scary, so you have to watch over these shock blasts, but... I and the death timers aren't that long, I guess. Maybe there's not an inhib bangle. Probably tower and leave. That's what I would expect the call is. Yeah, shock blast there. Gonna land onto cards. Lost just making sure that he doesn't die with the stopwatch. Nobody gonna walk in and bring that AoE to him. I think they need to back out now. Yabby is committed for it, though. He's gonna die for the inhib, and he's not even quite gonna get it. The shutdown goes to Hadio at the end of that one. Flash Violt. Outplayed is all I can say about that one. Ooh, lost walking forward, just looking for the damage. He'll trade himself for Souter. So the life is pretty low, but they just don't have any damage left between pickaxe cards and banana. And they'll have to back on out. Um, not really any objectives to get, so it's just going to be some jungle camps. And maybe Pickaxe gets the extra one on the end of this one as Snow Life coming in. He's got a little bit of healing from that Death's Dance. Is, does he die to it? Why did he get 80? Oh my god. The Death Stance killed him, no. I think his Ocean Drake kick there or something. But yeah, he almost lived. Fire of Sunder and Death Stance. I think actually she gets a little bit of a freebie though. Is it the... Both teams look really unsure of what's happening. Yeah, the flash Ooh. forward, though, from Pickaxe. Do they actually have the damage to kill Dallas? They'll jump on in. Yabby's about to be able to rejoin, but they've already lost Pickaxe and uh, and Banana. And Cards is going to have to get out. Oh, He'll no, flash no, no. away from the Q, or from the W, excuse me, from Dallas. I said they looked unsure. Our team was very sure what they wanted. Uh, it's a little tough. I don't... It's a tough way to lose your Volleyball Flash, because at this point in the game... Really, at every point in the game, I think for that character, Flash is pretty important. You, you know, you're a single target stun uh, that you have to be in auto attack range for. So not having your Flash means you're a little bit of a... Oh no, Souter? You can really play oh, heal. he sees it with the Shock Blast, but it doesn't matter as Yabby is there with the culling. Can he get the last couple of autos? He should be able to, but does he get it turned on him? Oof. A lot Ooh, of damage wait. coming out of Souter, but Lost finishes that one off for his 14th kill of the game, and now... Everybody buzzing around this dragon as it spawns here in three seconds. The spawn timer is exactly the same as Baron. Snow Life looking for the engage. Gets knocked back, but he's on to Lost. He's got the stopwatch. The flash over the wall from Dallas. Watch him out put the damage over the wall. But Yabby dashes in and takes him down to the double kill for uh, the Lucian. Lost with a nice little sidestep on the Blitzcrank hook, and they'll finish that one off. Oh. It's a triple kill. It's a quadra kill for Yab Yinda and Lost... I, I don't know if he's scumbags or it was self-defense, but he gets the other one. And it's the ace for Return of the Middle Sticks. The, the other one was, uh, it was Souter before the play even happened. Okay, well, so then never mind. No steal. No steal. Well, I think even if Yabby got that kill, uh... Might not have been in penta. time for the yeah. the Penta anyway, but still a really nice quadra kill for Yabby and uh, Baron in the cards for Return of the Middle Sticks. That one fight is enough to turn on the objective bounties again. They'll pick up the Baron at the end as well. And now it's our team's game to lose at this point with the Ocean Soul, with the Baron buff. They are about as strong as they're going to get this game. Yep. I mean, hopefully they're able to close it out here. I, I Taking it to Elder would get a little bit scary, but, I mean, you've got a massive Syndra, a Lucian, who just got a quadra kill, and... I don't know, it looks like they're taking some final resets before they get their push. Need to pick up their buffs, get a little bit of gold. Full build Lucian. Burden Barrier picked up on uh, Lost. Gonna try and mitigate a little bit of that Nico damage and that Kaisa folk. Yeah, plus the ornament upgrades now going to, to Lost and Yabby there. 
very strong. And I guess we won't get to see the last two, unfortunately. That's really what we're here for, is the Orin upgrades. Hard's about to, he's about to hit 16. We'll get the, the Cum Tunk upgrade. The Cum Tunk? Uh, yeah, my bad. <laughs> 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 Um, I, I hadn't heard that one before. That's, that's a new one for me. Um, yeah, they're, they're pushing on in to this mid lane, uh, trying to use some of these Baron minions to wail away on the inhibitor. You've got Spoozy out on the flank on the Blitzcrank. I don't know that that's exactly where he wants to be, but they'll have to watch as their inhibitor falls. And now rotating up into the top lane, as one would expect, just knocking it all down in order. Or ROTM. Yep. I like it. We're playing it, playing it slow, playing it safe. There's not really anything else to do. So just go knock them all down. Ooh, okay, Orin moment. Yeah, Orin able to go immune through the CC. Playing oh. some bodyguard. Not that, Ooh. not that time though. Uh, takes the hook. Takes a lot of damage to start out with, not able to reactivate the horn, but one for one <laughs> thus far as Pickaxe is able to jump in. Yabby's still untouched on the backside, now able to start firing away, and Dallas falls immediately as he gets Ooh. into range. It's a double kill for Pickaxe as Yabby looking to get that exclamation point, get the last kill here on Spoozy. He'll finish that one off and heal up nicely underneath the turret. ROTM will push that one back in, and they'll stay alive in their hunt for the playoffs now, improving to three three. Yep. I... <laughs> that was a little silly. Watching Cardinals just stand there CC'd for about four seconds, but... It's a... It's a good series. You yeah. know, I, I... Game two was goofy. I don't know if I'm able to look past what, what I witnessed there, but... <laughs> um, you know, all in all, I think there were some good performances in this game, and, and game one, obviously, is, is very rotom sided so, uh, you know, it's hopefully both these teams can move into playoffs. I think it's pretty clear, uh, you know, you got some areas to improve, but it's nothing crazy, right? It's some easy things to clean up. Some, I think that there's a few things in that game that if you clean it up, you're, you're looking good going into playoffs, so. Yeah, I, I think in particular game one is something to build on. It feels like they got kind of dragged into the into the muck, kind of got crabs in a bucketed the last two games. But game one in particular yeah. was very clean from Darkwind and something that I think that they can they can build on and, and improve upon for the rest of their series. But um, one more week for both of these teams for Crowstorm and Darkwind. Uh, Got to have it in order to qualify for playoffs, and um, we'll see where we end up uh those games as far as i know are going to be saturday i don't know if the master series is also saturday so uh we'll have to play it a little think bit it will be. we'll have to play it by ear uh so your default day is saturday right and they can't reschedule no, to any no. other day our default day is monday oh it's monday okay well then i think we'll have we'll hopefully have uh Platinum games on Sunday and then Masters on Monday, but uh, we'll uh, we'll update the stream when when we can and that'll do it for us this week. So uh, for myself, uh, thanks Lexus for joining me today and for the rest of our TM. Thanks for joining us. If you don't follow the stream, please hit the follow button here and uh, let's get you out. I don't like either of the people I have to raid, so we're not going to raid anybody. So <laughs> see you see you later. So...